break that stupid smile across your face It's comedy time And the gang's all here The girls, the boys Jeremy is in Dartford um, Jeremy, what would you like to say? Well, hello, James. Uh, I, I'm the Jeremy in the photograph. I'm That's the leader of Dartford Borough Council, and uh, it, it's you. It's me you're talking about. Fantastic. And, uh, had you had exceptionally I'm... good news before the photographer turned up? No, uh, let me tell you what happened, uh, James. Uh, and you, you, know, you don't know me, my friend. And I'm trying to be. I, I, I try and. I love my town. I love the people in it. I'm trying to do the right thing. Yes. We were. We were invited yesterday to open. Uh, it's not actually a brand new food bank, it's a new location where there'd been a lot of work put into it by the volunteers and others. Uh, there was actually a bit of a joke just before the ribbon was cut, and uh, photographs will tell a snapshot What was the joke? The moment. Uh, I think it was about the countdown. I think the countdown started, started and I think... So, uh, so you did a countdown good. and before you cut well, the ribbon? Well, James, James... At a facility me... for people who can't afford to feed James. themselves after 12 years of government well, by your party? And well, let me just say, James... Uh, you say what you want, didn't, Jeremy. Didn't, James didn't... Well, you, you, I can if I get a moment. Uh, uh, food banks didn't begin with a political party, James. They began you know, many years ago. Uh, they began under a Labour council... Uh, Labour government. I can't, I can't remember any well, parties being thrown uh, when they weren't opening. Well, this wasn't a party, James. And, and really, if it was, it was it was thrown by the people who organised and volunteered. Whose idea the was bank. the ribbon? Uh, it was the pe entirely the people who organised the event, and it was the person who runs the food bank. You didn't think to uh, say, I'm not sure this is appropriate. It's a, it's a food bank that's feeding people that can't afford to feed themselves. It it's not really it something we should be celebrating. I mean, listen, the thing yeah. is, you, you can say here yeah. now, uh, do you know what? Yeah. The reason yeah. why we've took the pictures down, or the reason why the mayor, who I believe is one of your conservative colleagues, isn't she? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The reason why they've removed those pictures from the Facebook page well, is obviously yeah. because we looked at them and realised how utterly inappropriate it was. I or you can carry true. on no. trying to defend it against <laughs> no, the backdrop of knowing well, that you've taken down the pictures in a panic. So you can't really have it both ways. I Jeremy. I appreciate. Uh, listen, James. I know. I know it's your name on the show, and you can say. You say but if, but uh, give me a moment just to say something. And why then, why you did you take say, the like, pictures down? I'll tell you why. Yes. It's because the, the comments underneath it have become political for, for the mayor's page. M my understanding is the pictures are going back if they haven't already. Excellent. The, we'll the, keep an eye comments, out for them. How can it not be political the, if you're the conservative the comments, leader of Dartford Council? Because 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 the comments were on the mayor's page. That's but why. she, she is a conservative councillor as well. Well, there are plenty of Labour mayors out there, and they will tell you too, James, that the mayor... I can't see any of them laughing like a drain people. at the opening of a food bank, Jeremy. Well, James, you're taking a snapshot of a moment. I'm trying well, to I can see 12, actually. Okay. Let, me, let, me, let me ask you... Snapshots. If you don't mind. Let me ask you... It doesn't work like that, I'm afraid, Councillor. <laughs> OK. No, so, I'm, here's how it works. Well, what the hell yeah. were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking that we'd been invited by the organisers and volunteers of the food bank to come along. We, we have a long association with them. We've been funding them. We've been helping them, supporting them. You should, you should, you are, should be standing there looking, looking shame-faced. This we is 12 years of conservative government. Well, the people in the back of the photograph, uh, James, who are also laughing, were people who work at the food bank, volunteer at the food bank. That's fine. The they're they're bank, not elected and, representatives and, of the party responsible and, for the cost of living crisis. And I'm trying to you make are. the point, James, that we are working... Well, I'm not responsible for that. No, I you're an elected representative of that party, Jeremy. I'm a local councillor. So you turn up... Let me give you some very, free very advice, all right? I'll play the role of Malcolm I, Tucker. I'll play I the role of Malcolm Tucker. What you do when you turn up at the opening of a food bank, you say it's a crying shame that this is... Necessary, but yes. I want to applaud the efforts of all the people yes. trying yes. to plug the holes in the basic yes. requirements of human yes. decency that yes. have been blown wide open by yes. people like Jacob yes. Rees-Mogg, Michael yes. Gove and Boris Johnson. Yes. And frankly, I'm ashamed to be a member of the same party and as them you, because the necessity of food banks is so immense that the sure. fact that anyone could call them uplifting yeah. is a national shame. There you go, yeah. you can have that for have nothing. You, have you, have you, I mean, this, this, the Malcolm Tucker analogy is interesting because I think that's what's happening here, actually. The, and we're losing contact with real people and yes. they're real Situation. Real people. I well, I, I speak to real people leader. all day, every day, and every I'm single one of them thinks this is gross. I am an elected council leader in Dartford. I love my town. I love the people. I'm trying very hard to support people through difficult times. We did during the pandemic. We're doing it now. Visiting food banks, opening food banks, supporting food banks, discussing with members yesterday. No one the food is disputing. Bank. All the things the you talked about. pictures still haven't all been changed. Listen, you, no, about, you can James. you can go off on your party political broadcast. It's not, you, I you, talked about you know, politics at you all. know, you're, and I you're know. You're the only one talking about politics. You guys. know, and I know that this is a really, really bad look. Why don't you just say so, and then we can all go uh, home happy? 
Well, I would ask. And next time they open the, a food bank, don't right. don't don't cut a ribbon, Jeremy. Why don't you Why don't you ask the people who invited us and who took the photograph? It wasn't a photo opportunity. I didn't decide to have a photograph taken. Mate, it was taken it, by the director. I, I, I of get the asked food for photographs bank. all the time. In some circumstances are appropriate. Some are inappropriate. Well, you don't do it. You don't say, as an elected member of a council, mm -hmm. as an elected politician in a part of the country where they need a food bank to feed people who can't afford to feed themselves. You don't say, "Oh, pass the scissors. I'll cut the ribbon now." You just don't do but, it, man. But what about the... Uh, oh, what you about, have no, what about, you have what no, about? Hang on, you have no view of the people who invited us yesterday. Mate, you were perfectly listen, happy you can, and welcoming. You, you, no, it's the ribbon and the scissors the and the laughing that's the problem. Set not up, not the fact up. that you opened it. The and then I'll ask you again, why have you taken the pictures the down? Why have you taken uh, the pictures I, they down? They will go back. I promise you they'll go back. All I right. promise you they'll go well, back. I'm watching the, the page. The, the, the issue... The issue the, when are they going back up? To do this. When we are they going back up? To do this. Don't hector me, James. I'm, not really you. I'm asking you, you when are, they're going back you're up. You're not allowing me to get a word in. And, uh, and it's You've had several words in. When are the pictures going back up? They're going up very soon. There's an instruction to put them back up and they will go back up. Let me just say... Let me just say... Will you just give me a minute? Yes, of course I will. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I didn't need to phone. I, my, my phone lit up this morning because it appeared on LBC, and I, I wasn't listening to it. And, and I ring, I rung in. But let me just have a minute just to say this: um, the, food, the, the necessity of food banks is a, a real scar on our country. Okay, nobody wants to see people in the situation. But I met many of the clients yesterday, and the conversations I had with the people who ran the food bank yesterday was: how can we civilise this? How can we improve this? How can we make this more of a uh, of a helpful situation for the people who are there in other things. Actually, it's not just the food bank they're running. They're running signposting advice on uh, on, on homes and homelessness. And no one things. is and disputing. Right no one is disputing the decency of the people that run these places. But they set it's up the, the event political necessity <laughs> of them that is shameful, and the fact well, that an I, elected. You see, the thing is, you, you can start bleating about not being allowed to speak, and then you go off around the houses. The conversation right. we are having, and that my listeners are. are question, I'll the conversation my listeners are engaged in, which you have sought to but contribute to is one about how on earth elected representatives how on earth could elected representatives have thought it was appropriate to mm -hmm. laugh smile and celebrate the opening mm -hmm. of a food bank because the organizers of the food bank thought it was appropriate and that's where they invited okay. they, the, 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 the gentleman there who's a fantastic guy a okay. friend of mine and you didn't with think to say the that there's no way that we should be taking photographs of everybody laughing uh, cracking the, jokes the, if the people, if the people, you cracking, don't know jokes. cracking jokes, cracking if jokes. the people, if the people at the food bank volunteering for it, running it, organising it, thought it was appropriate, then frankly, as a guest, it's not for me to suggest that I would not do this and not do that. You should have uh, asked I, the clients. I'm not, I'm not so. I did actually speak to many clients yesterday. Did, did you ask them how they me. felt about I a did, celebratory I ceremony? Did, I think they're very because the ones that ring me are ashamed to be yeah. seen in these places. Okay. Well, I think oh, I understand that, and that's exactly why the conversation with the volunteers, helpers, and organisers yesterday was so deep about these issues. How can we help? How can right. we improve the process? How can we get so out? You're, bl of this you're blaming the organisers. You're not hearing then. me. Well, we were invited, James, yeah. and we went, James. Last and, chance, and, Jeremy. Uh, um, was it was it a mistake? Do you think to be laughing and smiling while you were cutting the ribbon at the opening of a food bank? I'm very really pleased. I'm really pleased to have gone there yesterday. They're great people. It's not what I asked. I'm afraid. Was it a mistake to be photographed smiling and laughing and cutting a ribbon while opening a food bank? I think it would have been rude and a mistake not to do what they asked us to do yesterday. They didn't, didn't ask you, you to laugh and smile and crack jokes, did they? Well, they were. They, the was it a mistake there, to be photographed laughing <laughs> while you cut a ribbon at the opening of a food bank? It would have been. A, I, I have no responsibility for when a photograph. Was it a mistake to be photographed laughing when you that cut the ribbon at the opening of a food bank? It would have been a mistake to, have, to okay. not do what they asked so, to do, James. Yes or no? It would have been a mistake to not do what they so asked to do. So it wasn't a mistake James. to be photographed laughing. No one asked you to laugh, did they? Uh, well, <laughs> laughing is an involuntary response which involved all of the volunteers and the It's an involuntary there, response to funny things, and there's nothing funny about the opening well, of a food bank. The, the organ I mean, you need to put... You, did, you need to speak to the organisers about that and ask whether they the also buck. I'm it speaking to you because you're the one front and centre in the photograph that I'm uh, talking I'm not, about. I'm not, Was I'm it a mistake to be photographed <laughs> laughing and joking while cutting a ribbon at the opening oh. of a facility des designed to help people who can't afford to eat after 12 years of government by the party you mm. represent? Oh, I was very pleased to go there, James, and very pleased to do what Thanks you Thanks for calling, started. Jeremy. Thanks, matey. Have a good day. I guess some things are just no laughing matter. Uh, staying in Bristol, John is there. John, what do you reckon? John, I, um, why do you think that, based on whether that person is paid or not paid, 
it determines their skill set on to use a taser. That seems like that's your, that's your problem. Because it's a full time job for the I people know, that, that are paid. That, that doesn't mean that their training is any less than what a volunteer is. Because obviously, as you mentioned, the requirements for these special constables that will get the tasers yep. go through a lot of training, minimum amount of service required. If someone was attacking you in the, in the street who was drunk and there was a constable with a taser, would you ask them first if they were a special or if they were a full-time? I, I, I'd ask them what star sign they are before I, before I ran the risk of them pulling their taser out, which is obviously my way of acknowledging that's a very good question. Why would they not have had them before then, do you think? Um... Because it wasn't me that probably, decided. It wasn't. It, it wasn't me that decided. Specials shouldn't have tasers. It was the same uh, structure, if you like, that is now deciding that they should. So I guess the question has become: What's changed? The level of crime and how absolute savage it is, and the sort of criminals we've got these days. They have no regards for police officers, and obviously, we need to make sure that we're in a situation where we need to start protect, uh, protecting these people. Do you know how I know? Do you know how I know you're not a police officer? Why is that? Because you just use the word savages. <laughs> where is, where is, where is the fella? Where, where, varied vocabulary? Where is the fella who... Well, well, not if it's policing by consent, mate. No. The fella who was a police officer talked about people who might be in their, in their cups or they might be intoxicated, they might be high on drugs, they might be a state in, a, a, in a state of high emotional pressure. And that's why he can wear the uniform and, and that's just how I knew that you don't, that's all, it's not a criticism but, but that, that, that the kind of person that uses the word savages is not the kind of person I would want to have a taser, you see And, and even though I was I am not in the um, police force, I did serve 10 years in the RAF Yeah, well that's fine because you know who you, 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 very closely with you know who your enemies are in the RAF, you, you, you're not going to be opening fire on civilians because you think they're savages or at least I hope you weren't, and if you were, this is probably not the place to, to, to admit it. People who get tasers do not want to use them willy-nilly on people that who are... No, I'm low. not, I'm not, no, I was like, I'm actually a little bit of light-hearted joshing, mate. I just knew as soon as you used the word savages that you weren't a copper, and, 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 and Carl wasn't a copper either, he was a, a, a documentary filmmaker, so it's not really a criticism, it, it's just an illustration of perhaps one of my concerns is, is the mindset of people who are drawn to the idea of being able to use tasers who aren't currently in the police force, but I don't imagine you're intending to apply any time soon. Adrian is in Clapham. Adrian, what made you pick up the phone? Uh, because I think you're being, um, excuse my uh, use of language, somewhat of a drama queen. Yeah, um, uh, firstly, pers firstly, you're misrepresenting the intent of the bill. It's to curb serious disruption, not just disruption. Well, could you define so, that then? Well, I mean, that's for the courts to decide, isn't it? I mean, no, it's not, you see. Uh, You've misunderstood well, the point of the legislation. That's for the Home Secretary to decide. Oh, OK. Well, well, I'd, I'd, but I'd, carry I'd on lecturing me about what I failed to understand, <laughs> champ. OK, well, uh, well it, 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 in this country we have a parliament that passes the law and then very often what you have is case law that determines what the law means which is why you have uh, did you listen to any of the debate country. last night did you listen to the lords describing no, i, I, I what... haven't had a chance to do that yet okay what... well you, you you've just completely misrepresented all of the concerns expressed in the house of lords yesterday but i tell you what's really yeah. funny you've done it live on national radio no i haven't listen if you could actually let somebody finish before interrupting them it would actually improve the uh the interrupting you pal is an act of charity yeah, well anyway you, you start again yeah well if i could just be allowed to finish we have a we have a system of governance in this country where parliament passes the law and then it's for the court now, you've to already said that interpret yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's wrong in this case. So start again and say something that's true. Well, if, if you're saying that the concept of judicial precedent is being set... No, I'm talking about who would have the right to determine when the police get sent in to break up a protest under the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill that was debated in the House of Lords last night. I apologise that I haven't been clear enough, but I think you're the only person listening who hasn't understood what this conversation is about. James, in this Adrian. country, we have the Human Rights Act, OK? And the Human Rights Act brought into force the European Convention on Human Rights. Article 10, which includes the right to protest and the right to freedom of expression, is a qualified right. And member states of the Convention have the right to pass laws and to determine what is and what is not acceptable conduct in the expression of your Article 10 rights. No, what this would be in the gift of the Home Secretary. That's the whole, Again, I, I really... I mean, I, this might sound a little bit unkind, but you can't really comment on a debate you didn't even read about or listen to. The, so, the, the, all, so you're saying that all of the contributions from all of the lords from uh, 
uh, former yeah, it's, director it's, it's, of public it's, it's, prosecutions down. They have a poorer really grasp no of what was... When you constantly talk over people. I'm not it? talking over you. I'm trying to help you. I'm just yeah. saying we're talking about what happened in the House of Lords last night and you've conceded well, you haven't got a clue. You, you yeah, haven't got well, a clue what happened in the... But maybe I'm being a drama queen or, or maybe you are. But you haven't got a clue what happened in the House of Lords last night. I've already explained to you. I haven't listened this, to... This is the not what the bill says. Happened. This is part of what they were complaining absolutely, about. Absolutely I mean, pointless if you don't ever let anyone finish, James. It's oh, go on, pointless. have another go, then. Right. In this country, we have the European Convention of Human Rights. So so the bill aware, will supersede that. Yes, I'm aware of that. Right, so why right. are you talking about the thing that's going to be superseded in defence of the thing that's going to supersede it, pal? Because the case law that is... That, that, that there the won't be case law, it's in the gift of the Home Secretary. That. I am going to talk over you, but I promise you it's, it's a favour. It's an act of kindness. Because you're live on national radio um, expressing completely bogus opinions about a debate you have absolutely no knowledge of on an issue you don't understand. James, Are you I'm thinking of to... running for political office sometime soon? Because I could no, recommend a party. Going, so, no, I'm, I'm thinking of becoming a disc jockey so I can just talk over people. It's not a disc jockey, mate. That involves playing speak. records. So you can't even get the definition of the when phrase disc like jockey record, correct. Mate, at times you're a bit like a stuck record when you don't stop and let people talk. So if I could be allowed perhaps one final opportunity to explain. Meanwhile, Craig is in the Mayenne in France. Craig, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi. Um, well, it's funny that you just mentioned nationalists in Northern Ireland, really, because that's pretty much my point here. Um, the the far right, or the front national, not the far right's front, is, has taken a massive is a far upsurge right. recently. Well, it is, all right. But, is know, it? I even mean, with... Because Marine Le Pen has, has, has sort of hung yeah. up her headphones, hasn't she? Well, yeah, she? she's in the National Assembly now. Right, but she's not leader of the well, Front National anymore. No, 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 she isn't, no. Well, I, mean, I don't think many people not, listening not, know that, Craig. That's the only reason that I'm mentioning okay. it. All right, no, well, it's because she's in the National Assembly now, so she can't uh, split time between everything. But there's a massive upsurge in, uh, you know, the nationalist uh, mm. view here in France. And that's probably one of the... And, and I'll be honest, I agree with your other two callers. The French really are concerned about it at all. But the reason it's not getting lots of coverage, or one of the reasons, may well be that it fuels this fire of this nationalist... But wouldn't they be delighted? Because... Well, no, because they're basically saying the French are now going to keep more people in France. No, I mean, <laughs> delighted the more people come here in dinghies, the, the more delighted the far right will be. Well, so the far yeah, right on this side of the channel are, 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 are having fits well, of the vapours and, and all sorts of well, yes, psychodramas, yes. and the far right on the other side of the channel are all for it. Well, yes, because, and that's why, and my point, yeah? what, what, my point is why it's not getting, that maybe it's not getting the coverage, because it really would fuel the fire here. I mean, my, my mayor of my village, my small village, uh -huh. stands on, you know, stands on the front national ticket. I mean, you know, you wouldn't know it, but there is a lot of hard feeling towards, you know, there are a lot of immigration problems here, as your, as your previous caller has said. Indeed. You know, I, I, I live not too far from Le Mans, and it's, there, are certain, there are certain parts of the city now that are almost like no-go areas at night time. Well, there's, you know a phrase, I mean? there's a phrase I've heard before. What, what do you <laughs> think the motivation for the French government is then to sign this deal? Well, I should think it will help. As I, I did actually message, message in earlier because I was a bit busy calling, but I think it will go towards paying the wage bill. <laughs> just, just, just pump pocketing the cash. And immigrants like you, Chris, just to be clear, immigrants like you are not part of the problem that you're talking about. Sorry? Immigrants like you are not part of the problems that we're talking about here. Well, um, well, no, I don't, I don't think I just don't want to be I mean, clear, when you say there's a lot of problems with immigration, you're an immigrant, oh, so yeah. how do I know, how do yeah. I tell that you're, you're, you're all right? Well, no, I don't know. There are, there are people around me that probably don't think I should be living here for the last 25 yeah, years. Yeah, but you don't well. think you're part of the problems, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, you I'm are. You are part of the problems. Well, well I'm an immigrant, aren't yes. I? So, you know, if, if, if immigration is a problem, I am part of the problem. You could naturally. move back. You could move back. No, how big a problem a do you years. think you are? Never a million years. How, how big a problem? That's a bit racist. What's wrong with Britain? Sorry? <laughs> how big a problem do you think you are? How long you got? How long you... Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I, oh. I, I seem to get on... I Just stay out of those no-go areas, though, Craigie. <laughs> stay out of those no-go areas. John's in Croydon. John, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Uh, yeah, she was, she was a revolutionary. How old are you? How old are you? I should have asked the other two uh, well, callers that. I'm 50-something. I'm 50 what? I think 50. it's important. Well, uh, nearer 60 than 50. Why are you being so coy? Uh, 
<laughs> well, you shouldn't ask my age on here. Why are you not a lady? <laughs> <It doesn't matter. laughs> Carry on. Oh, well, no, I think it's really important. I said at the outset, age is going to be absolutely crucial to this conversation. Well, but yeah, but yes, you is. don't have to tell and me it, if you don't want is. to. That's and, fine. And if you if you didn't live through those times, then you still won't. You you know you won't feel the 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 affection that a a, a, a significant amount of people have for that woman. A I significant mean, amount came, of conservative members or conservative no, 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 supporters. And we're, and, no, James, and working class people as well. But she, they, she they, put, they're allowed to support put, the conservatives and vote for them as well, John. Of course. Yeah. But do you remember, James, when British Airways just wanted to change their their pattern on the back of their aeroplane? Uh, you're on the fin, fin on the aeroplane. No. And she came along with her handkerchief and she said, no, 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 we're not going to have that. Right. We want the union flag back on it. That's what people want to see. Is it's it? not just about nationalism and jingoism. It's about pride in being British. And she... British she, Airways she is in Spanish now, She had it? that in spades. Yes. It's, uh, yes, so who cares? I don't know. You do. I, I'm a bit confused by what you're saying. Oh, well, I won't. I'm not. She put the pride back into Britain, James. Okay. And d during that time, she had a lot of en enemies. Uh, obviously, being a woman, she had to fight harder than most to get to where she was. Um, so Liz Truss, I think, has probably got a bit of an advantage because there are hints of Thatcher in, in Liz Truss. It's where not, it's very it's very weak. Where what what uh, what what are the what are the, what well, are the... she doesn't wear, she doesn't wear four hundred pound shoes for a start. Like Rishi Sunak, she gets her earrings from from a from a high street. Well, you know, Mar people don't like that. Do Mar they? So Mar they Margaret do Thatcher had image already. consultants who took her to Aquascreeton, yes. where I used she, to work. She, and you, you wouldn't get you wouldn't get much did, you yeah. wouldn't get much change. I don't listen. Let, let's not fall out. I don't think you've got much to say except that you really really liked her and something about flags on jumbo jets. James, she helped me a lot with my life. Go on. She helped me a lot. She liberated me financially. She liberated me. She allowed me to play the stock markets. I didn't need to go and find a stockbroker to do it. I'm just an ordinary person. How with did, a bit of how, how, this is why I was interested in your age. So you're very young to be playing the stock markets. James. And how, James, how, how where did you been she. For the last 30 years? Where have you been for the last 30 years? Well, I've been here for most of them, mate. There's no secret. So what. What? Uh, what? And, you d and, and the city has been revolutionised since the late 1980s, James, hasn't yeah. it? It's no longer a posh man's club. Anybody can, anybody can join it, and uh, they again, do. You're being, you're being a bit cryptic. So, so you, but you were able to buy and sell shares? Partly, yes. Yeah, of okay. Course. That's why I just say it. I'm not, being, I'm not being funny. I'm just, I'm just a bit confused. So, okay. I mean, would you describe yourself as a typical Thatcherite? Do you think, John, a classical no, Thatcherite? No, I, 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 des I describe myself as an ordinary working class per per person. Right. Who, an ordinary who, working class person who, who credits who Margaret Thatcher up, with allowing him who, to play the stock market. Also, you no, began by saying that working class people. Hang on a minute. You began by saying that working class people weren't Thatcher person. supporters. I'm, let me finish this point. A working class to wish person you hadn't who started. saved his money, <laughs> okay. who saved his money through yes. hard work. Well done. Which she, that's something that she, uh, well done. Yes. That's something that she well advocated as well, saving yes. your money, and then thought, right, now what do we do with it? Okay. Are you a member of the party? No, I'm not a member of the party. Okay, I'm only asking no. why you're so touchy, honestly. I wish I'd never asked your age. John's in Harris. John, what would you like to say? How you doing, James? You okay? Fantastic, John. What's on your mind? Good. I, I, I mean, it's, it's not that bad, is it, that they've done it, and it's not outrageous, it's, it's and it isn't good. the end of the world. It's actually good. Like you've, you've been describing. Well, it, it, I, I, I'm torn, because it is good on one way, but in another way it isn't. I mean, the gentleman before, he said about the, the bag of grain. To get, to get the amount of protein that a human being needs for an average day, you'd have to eat about... Ten bags of grain. So no, no one's no one's advocating for that, mate. No, and there, it is a cheaper source of protein as well yeah. for, for for the kids. And and these these are grown kids. And I, and I think that I don't know what he was talking about the intestines. Well, just tell me why you rang in. Don't worry about what he said. So, so basically, I, I put myself and yeah. my daughter in that position. Um, my daughter's at uh, preschool at the moment, but she's going to be going up to uh, primary school in September. I thought. How would I feel if I was told that by the school that we weren't that we were only allowed to have vegetarian options? I'd, hmm. I'd be a bit annoyed. I'd probably just ignore it, if I'm honest, and stick a bit of ham in her in her sandwich because that's what she likes. That's what she enjoys. <laughs> but you wouldn't notice. Us. You wouldn't. You wouldn't notice. They did, they, they did it last term. No one noticed until they sent the letter out. So the parents that had still been doing it anyway, I, I don't maybe, know whether they maybe, were doing maybe they, sandwich maybe they inspectors know. doing the sandwich inspectors. But how old's your daughter? Um, she's 
before. She's not going to notice, mate, if she has a cheese sandwich oh, or a ham sandwich. She does. Really? She so likes, you're raising a fussy like, eater? No, I'm not raising a fussy eater. She's oh, you got kind a of very are. Well What's wrong with a cheese sandwich? Diet. <laughs> um, it's, it's okay, but yeah. variety's a spice of life, James. She can have, you know, she can have, she she can have a cheese sandwich. Cucumber she sandwich, sandwich tomorrow. Oh, God, that bore off. That's <laughs> awful. No, she, no, she's, um, she needs a bit of protein in her diet. Yeah, and, and she can have for and breakfast and, and for and dinner. Then, I mean, let, listen, I, I, I don't know how tongue-in-cheek you're being. It's one meal a day out of three, and it is yeah. going to save money for the school, and not so much on the pack lunch side of things, but it on the... It probably on the... wouldn't save money for the parents. Why um, not? To be, able to, to be able to get an adequate amount of protein in each meal, you, you know sort of dietitians would say you want to... Uh, John, I, listen, I can so. patronise you a bit because your daughter's so young. Most of them are going to have chips and cake for lunch, mate, at school. This idea that they're oh, going to walk in and say, oh, I don't think I'm getting my daily protein well, question. Do you, you have, make the argument do, that do you have any endomar beans? That health is, is, is a reason to, 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 to your argument. Well, they're going to be encouraged to eat more healthily, but when you get to the age, when your daughter gets to the age when you're trying to encourage her to eat more healthily, instead of feeding a processed pork product, you will realise it's a very, very steep mountain to climb. So if you can take one bad thing off the menu, as opposed to all the bad things off the menu, then that's better than taking no bad things off the menu. Do you know what's missing from this story? And you've, you've reminded me of this with, with your mention of your little girl. That they haven't, none of the kids seem to be upset about it at all. I think if I told if I told my daughter she couldn't have ham in a sandwich, she'd be a bit. She annoyed. can have ham in a sandwich, just not the one she takes to school. Well, that's so when she, as soon as she gets home in the evening, she can have a ham sandwich. She can, can have, have it for ham breakfast. Sandwich. She can have it for she breakfast if she wants. She can have a ham sandwich for dinner or tea, depending where you live. Well, pardon? Well, dinner or tea. You know? right, you... Okay, mate. I, I think you're being serious. I kind of hope you're not. Sanjay's in Whitechapel. Sanjay, what's going on? Yeah, uh, yeah. N nice to talk again, James. And I just wanted to say, um, I think we've just lost the capacity to critique uh, within this. And uh, and I think what certainly happens with with certain faiths is that, um, uh, and if we look at especially the the, the Muslim faith, uh, for instance, why don't um, we look you know, at a different one? Well, I mean, we can look at this one because we've been looking I, at I, the I we've been looking at the Muslim one for forty four minutes now, yeah. and we've been critiquing so I, it. So let's critique another one now, just to make your point even more powerful. Well, no, because I, I, what the illustrator, I wanted, the point I wanted to illustrate was that Islamophobia for me is is too broad a term. It doesn't allow for any discussion. Um, so, so for instance, but, if, we're, you but know, we've if, been critiquing Islam all morning. Let's do another faith. Well, no. I What's mean, yours? James, What's your faith? I'm, I'm Hindu. Okay, I'm let's Hindu. do that then. Well, well let's so, say something. Let's say something about Hindu, shall we? Yeah. So, so for what, instance, what, 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 what is it with the cows? Well, this, like, like I said, I'm not I'm not patriotic to my religion either. Yeah, oh, but so what I is it with the cows? Yeah, we have an elephant. I think with cows, I think they they believe it's. What it's do you mean they? Because well, they would be uh, people who are from native Indian subcontinent. Oh, we're talking uh, about Hindus. It's we, isn't it, Sanjay? Yes, yeah, it's we. It's we. Yeah, so they, let's yeah, critique it properly. So, what what is it with the cows? Yeah, so I think the cows is more down to... Well, don't give me uh, I think the cows is more down. This is your faith. You grew up in it. You know exactly yeah, so, what it is. I don't. What yeah, is it with so, the cows? Yeah, the cows is to do with it being a holy cow. A holy cow? Yeah. The holy How does that cow. work? And Are all cows holy? <laughs> no, not at all. So but there's just one how, holy cow. That, that's how Indian villagers, for instance, would view the cow because it would give milk, it would provide dung for fuel, right? Um, for for um, fertilizer. Okay, Are you allowed to eat the holy market. cow? Uh, no, not at all. Are you allowed not to eat any cows? You could do. I mean, I eat beef, so. But I mean, uh, I if, you were, if you were, if you were a proper proper Hindu. Yeah, if I was a proper Hindu, so then then, or if I was an Orthodox Hindu, or I followed my faith, yeah, then certainly I, I would not eat beef, but I do eat beef. That's so, a bit daft, so, isn't it? So, that that so, religious so, belief. It about, certainly is. Yeah, it certainly is. But th that's the point I'm there making. There you go. We're critiquing religion. The, the Let's the do it with pork now. Let's do it with pork now, which is other religions. That would be Judaism and, and Islam, isn't it? It would do. That's but just the, daft, the point isn't I'm it? To make is that. No, but the point I'm trying to make, um, James, is that uh, we can't... Uh, for me, there should be a separation with Islamophobia. If there's something that incites hatred and violence, you mm. know, you, you, we can part those anti-Muslim bigotry. Yeah? So so that... that we, we should still be allowed to discuss, for instance, you, you might know Trevor Phillips when he was part of the Commission for Racial Equality. He later produced that Channel 4 documentary, What British Muslims Really Think. Uh, you know, he found that... But he's not uh, a British Muslim, is he? No, he's not a British Muslim, but he found around... He asked British Muslims, or his sample, he found about half, thought homosexuality, so homosexuality should be criminalised. But for some reason, we can't discuss that. We just did. Yeah, with that... Well, well we have, but then... Uh, well, we're I, literally discussing know, it. No, no, uh, well, we can discuss We're discussing it, the thing that you said we can't discuss. 
No, we we can discuss. But I, I I think we should. Why do you want to discuss uh, would, that would, on on a day that we're talking about Salman Rushdie's attempted murder? Yeah, because the point I'm making is that if you ask, let's say, I don't know, community leaders, you know, you made yes. this distinction of, oh, um, should GPs all be representative of shipmen? Of course not. But if you've got community leaders, uh, that could be, I don't know, the Muslim Council of Britain. I live in Tower Hamlets. We've got the big East London mosque down the corner. I mean, I would I would invite LBC to ask their official view on this. But I'd why? really be interested to know what their perspective Because I think that would then hopefully in part answer the question that you have and posed. If, and if a Hindu does something terrible, who do we go and ask then? Similarly, I think it should go to, there are Hindu centres. Why don't we ever do that? The Iris to because they're the community leaders. They set, they set the tone. Right. They set, uh, they set so the Hindu, agenda. So Hindu violence against, the... against Buddhism is quite well documented, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I've absolutely. never, heard, I mean, I've, they're, I've never they're... heard any Hindu leaders speak out about that. Well, no, because uh, if you look at uh, Prime Minister Modi, he's, he's up for it. You know, his, 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 uh, his agenda as part of the BJP is to nationalise India. He, he, he doesn't believe I don't know in what a that's secular country. got to anymore. do with Hindu violence against Buddhism, but I'll, I'll look into it further. In, 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 in conclusion, when we're having a conversation about people who believe their religious beliefs in, entitle them to tell other people how they should behave, you've rung yeah. in to tell me that you, how other people should behave. No, no, I'm, I'm saying they should be allowed to critique that. So, so we're, we're, critiquing, we're critiquing it, but you're telling them how they should behave. No, no, I'm not saying you, that. You I'm are. Saying, you're no, saying no, what I'm you think the Muslim Council of Britain say. should do. I'm just, I'm just saying, no, look, James, surely... Sanjay, I, I, I am looking. It's a conversation no, we, about we, why we, some we people have. think their beliefs yeah. allow them to tell others how they should behave. Well, because they and here you are to, telling me why your they, beliefs lead you to thinking... No, critique. ...to tell other people how they should behave. No, James, because they should have the ability to hold... To, well, I should have the ability to hold two thoughts in my mind at the same time. And you are. Yeah. Yeah, so that, you're, that's what You're I'm holding one do. thought, which, which, which is that no. you should be able to tell other people how they should behave, and, and another thought, which is that other people shouldn't tell other people how they should behave. That's two thoughts. Uh, they cancel each other out, but that's, I guess that's part of being human. Joy's in Raynham. Joy, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, Good morning. Um, this is my first time ringing into your show, so I'm happy to talk to you. I've listened to you for you. many years now. Welcome. Um, what I have to say is, I, I think you're wrong um, by saying that the Prime Minister has to literally sign up or get off his private GP and go back to the NHS. You, you tend to um, disregard the fact that he, yes, grew up with parents who worked in the NHS. I think that uh, makes it worse. Probably, I, I don't think so, because does it mean that he has to perpetually remain there and and do you think that it means um he's forgotten totally his kind of his memory has been um, well first of all out. first of all i began by saying that patient satisfaction in the nhs in 2010 was the highest it's ever been so he was a long way from from helping his mum with prescriptions on a saturday morning in 2010 yeah. wasn't he? he was filling his boots at goldman sachs so i don't think the experiences he had as a child as a son of a gp in the 1980s and and, and 19 90s has got much bearing on what the NHS is like in 2022. Right, so if you disregard that bit then, where, where do we go, and I know health is very important, uh, yes. but so is housing, um, yeah. so, so is Good food, question. so where, where do, does he have to go and live in maybe some crappy council <laughs> building with <laughs> mould? Watch your language, ever so, watch your language <laughs> ever so slightly. So, I'm, so I'm if, so you take, if you take my okay. argument to its logical conclusion, he'd be living, I, I, he'd be yeah. living in a council flat full of mould and travelling everywhere on, 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 on public transport. And, and, and living on the minimum wage yeah. Because you know, getting food stamps and and every, because that, that's the only way he can understand but these are what all, everyone else is feeling. I, I, this is a powerful point, and I, I'm not I'm not going to steamroller you or, or or claim that there's a zinging response to it. But what you describe, the circumstances you describe, are not commonplace. They, they might be majority. I don't think they are, for what it's worth. They're not. But the basic experience of the massive majority of this country with GP services. I'm not talking about transport. I'm not talking James, about James. James, you may be you may be insulated from it, but it is quite commonplace, especially the housing bit, especially the cost of living. People are suffering. People are finding it difficult having to choose whether to heat or to eat. It, you may not notice it, but it's happening. But you, uh, the but you can't. You can't. You don't. Advisor, you don't do that because because he can't have experience of every problem that every Britain exactly, faces. Exactly. 
Oh, hang on, I haven't finished speaking. You can't say exactly when I'm halfway through my zinging point. Because you can't have experience of every single problem that every Briton faces, you don't arrive at the conclusion that he shouldn't have any experience of any. He should do his best to reasonably avail himself of the common experience of people in the country that he governs. And the NHS seems to me to be a fairly easy entry-level requirement while recognising the absurdity of demanding that he lives in a mould-infested council flat and goes everywhere on an E2 bus. But you, when it's you the say, NHS. You, when, when you say... Um, he should go on that the NHS is reasonably easy. You also say, I've heard you say earlier in this program, that you, if you had, uh, one of your loved ones had a health problem, yes. you would do anything. Yes, to, I would. To use but I'm not Prime Minister. To, to, yeah, but the Prime Minister is a human being as yeah, well. But, but he wants to be in charge of all the other human beings in the country, which means he has to do everything he can to, it's not about to walk in, in their charge, shoes. It's about helping. So it's, it's not about ruling, it's about serving. No, but and, how and, do you know yeah, the desperation? I, I am, I am how do you know the desperation of the people who can't get a GP appointment if you have no inkling of it yourself? But that's the point. He doesn't not have an inkling well, of I, it just I, because I need persuading he then. How's he going to persuade me? By making sure it's sorted. Right. It doesn't have so to what, be. So, should we it. start the clock on that now? <laughs> okay. And I just wanted to say one more thing. You yes. mentioned that you were Catholic. Now, I'm Catholic. I was as raised. Well, I was raised something. a Catholic. Uh, okay, it comes so, and goes. Uh, uh, faith is a uh, faith is a many <laughs> splendid thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm raised and still a Catholic. Now, in terms of that, you, you know that priests don't get married, but they do give marriage advice. And some might say, "Well, it's not the best." Yeah, but I mean, I, they, I, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident in saying I personally wouldn't advise you to go to a priest for marriage advice. <laughs> and, and there's not a great deal in the Bible about why you should, actually. In fact, I don't think there's anything in the Bible at all about going to priests for marriage advice because there were no such thing as priests. True. There were no, no such things as priests in the Bible. So, um, and I think, I, I think I've dealt, I think I've dealt with that point be, better than I but, dealt with your previous one. <laughs> But James, all I'm saying is, it is not. Um, it's not practical. To it is practical. That, that, that I will step uh, back uh, from uh, this. Anybody? No, it is practical because I'm. I'm almost certain that other prime ministers, previous prime ministers, would not. They may have had a better experience or an easier experience or some sort of queue jumping experience. But the act of writing these checks, setting up this direct debit, in the same way that they didn't rearrange his wife's non dom status until they got caught. It's this really insidious sense that they're going to continue to avail themselves of epic privilege until someone actually points out that they shouldn't be doing that while they are in Downing Street. So Before and after doesn't matter. The conversation is completely different. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to I think it's uh, exactly the same. that one. I think no, it's exactly no, it's the same. the same. No, it's not the same. No? Because very few people have access to non dom state. But everybody so pays tax, different. and the people in charge should pay the same proportion of their income in tax that the people they're in charge of should pay. And it's household income that we're looking at. Anyway, that's a, we've had that debate many, many yeah, times. That, yeah, that, that's, that's a completely different thing. So you don't want a prime minister, you don't think it would be better for a prime minister to be signed up with a NHS GP than with a private one? I would be, I would prefer that the NHS, the place where everybody would want to sign up to, and that's what I want the prime uh, minister to work okay, on. Okay, it's a bit of a politician's answer, but we can at least part in agreement, because I would like that as well. I just think the likelihood of that NHS being created is enhanced by the amount of reliance that politicians have upon the NHS that is in need of improvement. Uh, Trevor is in Finchley. Trevor, what would you like to say? Well, I had the... Um, well, first, good morning, James. Oh, I had the Trevor. privilege um, of bumping into my local MP um, just prior to the last election at a civic reception. And um, I told him my misgiving to vote to Conservative. Yes. Um, and uh, I'd always vote to Conservative, grew up on a council estate and around the time of Thatcher saw what the unions were doing, thought, no, socialism, stuff for me. And as an aspirational, aspirational Conservative, started voting for them, never stopped. Yes. Um, but it was the first time I'd ever had such a, a moral concern and apprehension about the leader of the Conservative Party. Right, that's and, and, I, and, and I said to uh, Mike, I said, Mike, I really can't see myself voting for the Conservatives. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Yeah. And he's such a marvellous MP. He said, look, let's get, have a coffee. So I invited him around. Oh, wow. he, he spent an hour and a half at my house. 
having coffee, and I explained to him all my apprehensions about voting for him. And it was almost um, like saying to him, by the way, the ship's burning, the ship's burning, and yeah. his response will perhaps stand on the other side of the ship. And he, he said, look, he's not such a bad person. I said, but he is, he's egregious. Yes. You know, he's, he's suggesting um, uh, cancelling a law that is now being passed, you know, on the protocol. Yeah. He says the most outrageous things. I felt sometimes, he, I think he felt emboldened the fact Trump was there. You could get away yes. and say anything, however diabolical it was. I felt that he, Trump had led the culture, uh, a cultural decline. Alternative facts. Almost, we're, talk, we're talking about the, 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 the weaponization of blatant lies supported by huge of supporters who... who probably know that they're lies, and yet for reasons of electoral self-interest or, or something else, they go along with it. They pretend that they believe the lie, culminating, of course, in the claim that he actually won an election that he lost. i tell you what I find distressing at the moment is that some very good ideal MPs are, you know, paraded out to try and explain or justify his actions. Yes. And I think that, it, and it's that corruptibility that yes. I find it either, a, even more concerning. And there is a sort of, a sort of coterie of people, who, of, of, you know, the, the, the of conservative MPs, I think, are being debased by him staying there. And, and you know, to the, the idea... Well, the further that, away you MPs are from him, him, the further away you are from him in the Parliamentary Conservative Party, the less debased you will be. It is, I mean, there is something quite grim about seeing people like Nadim Zahawi surrendering slices Absolutely. of their soul every time they appear on television to defend him and running a very real risk of having Downing Street disown the very thing they've been defending while they're still in their car on the way back from the studio. I mean, that, that happens frequently now, regularly. The U-turn is underway by lunchtime on the stuff that they were touring the breakfast shows defending that very morning. It's incredible to see. So you do want a, a leadership challenge? Um, I would uh, ask for it, insist on it, plead for it. Right. I mean, the idea that the leader of France refers to the our prime minister as a buffoon, yes. I think, simply uh, you know demonstrates how awful our leadership has become, and Britain is now a laughing stock. Through the leadership, we have to have a leadership challenge. Can I? I'm going to run something by you because it, it, you you literally just made me think of this, uh, and it's in today's newspapers re reporting on an interview that George Freeman, who's a science minister, gave to the BBC yesterday, and and he said this: he did not stand as the patron saint of virtue. People knew who they were electing. Now, in a way, he is describing you, isn't he? Um, in a way, me which way? Well, you 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 were clearly aware of how egregious he was, to use your word, but you voted for him anyway. So I'm fascinated by the clash between where you are and where Freeman is, because you kind of voted for him holding your nose, thinking it's got to be better than the alternative and hopefully it won't turn out quite as badly as I fear. And now Freeman would say that you knew what you were voting for, which I don't think you well, did. No, there are different factors at play. First of all, Mike Freer is, is an outstanding local MP. Yes. There are many different communities in Finchley, and he, he spends time with all of them. He really it's is the most wonderful MP. Yes. And, he's, he, he, and I, I think all sides like him as an individual, okay. irrespective of his political view. The other thing was that Jeremy Corbyn's stance on NATO, the anti-Semitism, of course. Uh, was, was a danger of voting for him to, uh, to allow him in. So that's one of the other reasons I didn't vote for the Liberal candidate. I remember, James, that... Um, I think she had been Labour for th uh, on three consecutive elections following Thatcher. So there's all the danger of falling into Labour. Yes. Um, but like the Red Wall, there was a sense of, can we really vote for Jeremy Corbyn? No, I, think I, had I it not been I for Jeremy Corbyn, that. perhaps, perhaps you know, um, I would have voted. But I, as I said, it was, um, uh, I, ca I can't say I'm necessarily... Uh, um, a conservative voter by conviction, whatever that means. No, I do. Well, I think, I, I think, else. yeah, I think conviction is a bit of a euphemism. I, I, I don't want to mm. uh, speak ill of anyone. I don't know what I mean. Well, I think Isla demonstrated what, what that means. It means you can't contemplate voting for anybody else, and, and that is uh, true of Labour voters as much as it's true of Conservative voters, but elections, of course, are decided by everybody else, the people who can actually conceive of voting in, in one of t at least two and possibly even three ways. Thank you, Trevor. So Carl's in Acton. Carl, what does it mean? James, how you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, I'm anti-woke. Excellent. Is it in your Twitter profile? I don't have Twitter, I've got Instagram, but right. it's in my Instagram What does it profile. mean? What does it mean? Well, what does it mean to me? People have different um, interpretations of anti-woke or wokenism. Uh, to me, it means people who seek offence where it doesn't exist. They look for the tiniest little thing and pin on it and but well, everyone you know, would be anti that wouldn't they no it's, it's a bit like driving in a bus lane but not your full cars not in the bus lane it's just one wheel that's in the bus lane mm, you've lost um, me now 
to. So, so being a, so, so someone, someone, someone who's, who's hypersensitive and pedantic is, is that's annoying and boring for everybody. Maybe we should work in examples. So when you come across, when, when, when and where do you come across the sort of wokeness to which you are so passionately opposed? Well, apart I from in the bus in... lane. Apart from in the bus lane. <laughs> I used to work in local authority. I'm, I'm now self-employed. But when I worked in local authority, you didn't get on with your work. There was a few hours a week dedicated to these sort of woke agendas. Yeah, go on. Um, you know, going on these sort of courses um, and these internal training courses. And well, like what, though? Very, what, were the, what were they teaching you? It was all very insincere. Well, you might have been. You can't speak for anybody else. No, but the, the so what were they actually, teaching you? What, these what, what, so these trainers, what sort of would, courses? Would hold, these trainers would hold these courses, yeah. And you know they're being—I know how much they're paid. They're paid an absolute fortune, and they so regurgitate. That's not anti woke mate. That's just envy. So what were the courses? What were they? What were they designed to do? Well, I'm very envious. I know you are, but but what were the courses <laughs> designed to do? What were they training you to do? What were, what were they doing? Uh, I think they were designed to stifle rational discussion and debate. Well, they put that on the agenda. They put that on the door, did they? No, but that was... So what were, they, what were they designed to do? What what sort of courses are we well, talking I just about? Said, am I in an echo chamber? Well, clearly not, mate, no. Do you know what that means? <laughs> no, I don't, but no. you're going to tell so me. So what were the courses uh, officially designed to do? Right. So we'd go on these courses... Yeah. And you'd all be in a room, and it would be some topical discussion. Oh, God. Down with that sort about, of thing. About something that's happened lately. <laughs> so what would happen... It's awful, isn't the, it? So, so what would happen... Yeah. The, the, the powers that be would say, oh, we better, you know, this has happened in America. Right. We better send everyone on a course. For example? I don't want to quote examples, really. You kind of have to. I can't, because then well, you'll get everyone... That's the point, isn't it, though? So something that actually happened, that's all. Well, you bring one, bring one up, and I'll give you... I'll play no, out no, scenario. no, because you're telling me what it means. And the example is these courses that you went on, and the rooms that you sat in, and the, and the speeches that you listened to, so just tell me what they were about. Let me think of one. Uh... Take, take your time. Still there? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, well, let's say, for example, a, um, you know, preventing barriers to staff progression. So people from certain religions, cultures, races, etc. But you were going to give me an example of something that had happened in America. Yeah, so that, that, that yeah. happened. No, no, I was just, I won't bring that up. I think... Well, why not? Your, why don't you bring that up? Because I think most of your listeners know what I'm referring to. I have not got a clue. Okay. So, so t- tell us. Just keep an eye yeah. on the tape, the, the emergency tape that kicks in when we have periods of silence that, that, that go over. <laughs> so, so just tell us. Everybody already knows, Carl. So just tell us what it is you object to having courses on when you worked at a local authority. Well, I just think it's really insincere. Yeah, but we can't really know what that means until you tell us what it was, can you? Mm. So what, what what was it, mate? Things I'm a bit scared to go down the rabbit hole. You, just you're just to be clear, you didn't me up and accuse, just accuse to be me clear, you didn't ring in, you didn't, you didn't ring in by accident, did you? No, of course not. No. So you rang in to answer a question about what anti. I, I am yeah, anti woke. So you, you said. said what, so what yeah, what does that mean? Said, and you said it. Here are some said, examples, and I said just name one. And you said, what does it mean to you? So yeah. what does it mean to me? Yeah. It means to me people that actively seek offence where it doesn't exist. Yeah, so what were the courses? Well, various courses. Yeah, so just give me one example, on, then. Well, preventing staff progression. Um, you know, people... What do you think that means? Well, just stop them progressing in their career. So they were teaching you how to stop progressing in your career? Not me, personally. I suspect you didn't need any lessons. No, I, I didn't. I went to work to work. Yeah. I didn't go into so work what, to what, what, what were you to behave to... and be nice. Oh, so these were courses encouraging people to behave and be nice that you object to. That's what you mean by woke. That's what all my other callers have already no, I said. Think, I think we learn this when we grow up. 
Well, some of us no, do. I grew up in London. Well, you're I, very I, lucky. I you're already London. very nice and well behaved. What about people who aren't? Surely they'd benefit from these courses, Carl. Well, you know, they, they are the ones that should be marginalised. But why do people look You want to so marginalise people now? Isn't that woke? You want to marginalise people who aren't very nice? That's what everyone else has told me is woke. No, I want the people that are nasty and horrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, marginalise them, get rid well, of that's them. that's woke, though. Wrong. That's what woke but means. You're pro-woke, your, mate. You're not anti-woke. Your council tax shouldn't pay to send me on a day course. Well, what, you need to tell me what your the course was. What's the course? Your bins to be collected. You, you, on the contrary, I want I want local authorities to, to be run in a way that is forward-thinking and progressive. And if some people, not you, because you don't need these courses, but if some people are, are holding back the rest of the organisation, then I think giving them some training is a wonderful idea. Go on, just tell everyone the thing that they already know that you're talking about but you're not prepared to say out loud. Because otherwise people kidding. might think you're a bit woke. You're frightened of causing offence, are you? Isn't that what woke means? I've been, I have been cowed into silence by your lot. No, mate, you have tied yourself in knots single-handedly. I've been cowed into silence. You know who you are. It's right. your curtain switchers. It's your ones that okay. look out of their window. And look for offence where it doesn't exist. At what point in this conversation do you think you lost the Are plot you on next completely, door. James? Are you on nextdoor.com? Listen, I, I'm I'm very happily married, Carl. So no, you know nextdoor.com. It's a society Carl, I'm website. Very, I, mate, I'm very happily married. Let's not go weird. Final chance. Are you no, going to no, give no, me no, an no, example no, no, of something that is woke, or are we just going to wave goodbye to each other and, and fill in the gaps for ourselves? I'll let you fill in the gaps. Now, you see, I, I've got a horrible feeling that you've done the polar opposite of what you rang in to do, and you've proved all the previous callers completely right. But, you know, good luck to you. 12.42 is the time. There it is. Who can pause? Oh, hang on, Carl, come back a second. Is he... Is he... Oh, come on. Simon's in Southampton. I wanted to get the Downing Street angle on, on what, that would, what that would mean. Thomas is in Liverpool. Thomas, what do you think? Hi, hi James. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I'm grand, mate. What's on your mind? Right. Uh, I support Will Smith, 100%. Really? 100, 100%? Not just 95%? No, 100%, sir. I'll okay. tell you why, if you like. But, yeah, please. Okay, so we put ourselves in Will Smith's position? Yes. He's there. Uh, I've tried uh, to do that. Pardon? I've tried to do that. Brilliant. So let's say he's there, uh, he's probably nervous, yes. all the rest of it. Yes. He's there with his good lady wife. Now, <laughs> his lady wife gets insulted in yes. front of the whole world, essentially. So... He was, it, was it? I just, I, I, I don't know that this is necessarily the, 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 the kind of hill I want to die on. But, but was it that insulting? It references. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a, a bit of, you see, I, I like you, James, and ninety-five percent of the time, I agree with you. But the five percent is the best bit, right? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, the thing is, I, I know you right. I, I, know, I listen to your show, yeah. and I don't know whether it's because you're very clever or, or you're right. And a lot of the time, sort of. The problem with this is, my mate... Yeah, go on. It's your middle class. Do you think so? Middle class. Well, don't uh, do that, because I, I don't like the idea that, you know, the, the higher your level of edu... The lower your level of education, the more likely you are to resort to violence. Well, no, no, I haven't... I haven't... No, I wasn't necessarily saying that. All right, good. Sorry, I, 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 I wasn't saying that, but obviously you've done very well and, 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 and in your, your middle, class, middle class, and you said to yourself that you were a lover, not a fighter. Is that correct, sir? Well, well yeah, but that was a reference to... Well, slightly unfortunate reference now you come to think of it to, okay. to, to Ebony well, and Ivory by Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. Okay, but you, you should so, know that so, as a Liverpudlian. Uh, you should have spotted the Paul McCartney reference from a hundred miles away. Should have done. <laughs> so, the, 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 going back to the point. Yes. So, I take it, sir, you haven't been in many fights. But probably, I don't know. I'm just, now I'm going to have to say not as many as you, probably. But uh, we're talking about the Oscars. We're talking about we a are. stage. We're talking so marching up onto a stage and giving someone a slap in front of the world's cameras. So it's not comparable to having a bit of a ruckus outside the dog and duck. It just simply but, isn't. It, it, it is, though. OK. Because, because, sorry, the situation is, the late, he, he was with his, his good lady wife and she was insulted. Yes. Now, and he acted yes. in, in, in a way that he was, he was defending her honour. And, and to be completely honest with you, my mate, more people, uh, more people need a slap. Um, not, I, think, I did say that the only opinion I wasn't going to allow this hour was people ringing in and calling for more slapping. OK, right. here's my killer question then. Go on, then. Do you think she was pleased or unhappy about what he did? Oh, pleased? Of course she was. No, nah, I bet she, you she wasn't. No, I bet she was. Because I bet you she day, wasn't. I bet you five quid she wasn't. Pardon? I bet you five quid she was absolutely... You, 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 well, we could bring her on the show, my mate. Yeah, I'll bring yeah, all her right, on the you show. get a number. You get a number, I'll give her a ring. 
Well, they bring on a shooting up because at the end of the day. Jada, if well, you're listening, me, me and Thomas need you need to adjudicate in this uh, in this con- this this this, this co- conflict. Okay, then ask 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 a lot of the ladies listening. I don't actually. Like, she said, ask the ladies listening. First of all, she can look after herself. She and, can't. Uh, the, let me tell you, no, no, well, no, you can't because you can't expect a, a man's stronger. Generally speaking, a man men is generally stronger than women, aren't they? So she, she, God bless her, she couldn't like. That's, well, she could. That she could fair. easily have given him a dressing down. She could have made him look stupid. She could have made him look small. She could have reminded him of uh, uh, the, the, the 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 reasons why the context of his joke was unfair. She could have made a joke about his manhood. There's a million things she could have done. But sitting there like the meek little lady while your while your husband gets up on stage and gives him a slap, I'm going to disagree with you. But like you said, you know, it's the five percent of the times that we disagree with each other that keep us honest, Thomas. Claire's in Kennington. Claire, what would you like to say? Oh, hi. Um, I think that, in in a way, you're, you're a bit guilty of this false news thing. Um, you've been reporting about the, 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 the timing, time of the queues, which is actually shorter than, than it's being publicised, and it's been sensationalised. Because I, 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 I've read some of the stuff online today. Um, admittedly, I don't buy newspapers very often anymore. Um, and I don't think they're having a massive go at, at Meghan Markle. I think they're just pointing out that that's what happened. And from my point of view, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a royalist, and I'm not a particular. I, I, I like to watch these things because I think they're of sort course. of majestic we and the yes. historic importance. And I am sympathetic towards, you know, what's happened to him and his mother. But it, as part of a very formal procession, and and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were the only couple. To, to hold hands when they were in Westminster Hall as part of that very formal part of the procession. Oh, I've got, I know that and, Zara, uh, Zara Phillips and her husband held hands in, in the hall as well. They, were, they, yeah, they weren't in the procession a little bit, though, were they? What difference they were does on, that they make? Were to the, uh, because I think, you know, it's being televised, it's part of this big show of monarchy. Yes. Um, and it's very, very formal, and, you know, everyone else managed not to do it, and in that way... Well, I maybe they didn't want to. Self-indulgent. Self-indulgent? Yeah, I think it's a bit self-indulgent to, to feel the need to hold hands is there a, when they're part of such a is there, really is formal a, bit of the procession. Is there a place we can go to to find out when it is and is not acceptable to hold hands with your wife? Because I'd hate to get it wrong myself at a family I know, funeral. I know it must it must be absolutely horrendous. But where do and you get your where, where are you where are you where are you getting your guidance from on this? I, I just think I just think the fact that people have noticed it suggests that you don't do it quite then. But I, I agree, it must be really difficult to actually follow every royal protocol, especially if you haven't so it's, been... So it's, 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 the part, it. it's the part of the day that they did it in, because I've got pictures in front of me of other couples holding hands in exactly the same room. It's, so, yeah, from my perspective it is, because right. I think it's much more noticeable, because it gets broadcast around but the world. But you've only noticed it because... In, you, you, Hall. You've only noticed it because you looked up all the people being horrible on social media. You don't read the newspapers and you didn't notice it yourself on the television. Well, to be fair, I think I have noticed it in certain situations. When well, I'm we're only when talking I, about one situation, know, aren't we? What other, are situ- what, what, what other situations situation What other situations are you thinking of now, Claire? Uh, well, I, I, look, I'm, I'm quite a tactile person myself and I, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm a big believer in... Well, in don't hold, in, don't, in hold, don't hold your husband's <laughs> hand at your, at your grandma's <laughs> funeral or whatever you do, Claire, because people like yeah, you will be slagging you off on national radio. No, know, no, it's not it, different. It is, I think it is different. I okay, think well, because they're better than you. And it's in Westminster Hall. No, no, because, because it's a show and if you're going to be part of that show... Right. You follow, you sort of, you just need to... to, to so to what were the other examples you were thinking of a moment ago? Um, in, in, in sort of formal situations, I guess. Um, Go but, on. but I'm, I'm not saying that it's, o- it's only, necessarily only then. Well, as part of the processions and things like that, Go I on. think, I think they tend to be more, um, slightly more tactile, and I think it is more noticeable. But it's only. And, and you have a problem, you have a problem with that. I Why? Don't have, I don't, I don't have a huge problem Why with have it. Why um, in, in many ways. Because I think that my point is that it's being televised, and in that particular point, <laughs> uh, no, it, at that particular point, it's the yeah. majesty of Westminster Hall. It's the history of it, yeah. and they are very formal, aren't they? That's the way they do it. Yes, but I, I, mean, I mean, some of it is horrible, and and it was horrible. But that here he had is, to walk behind but, his but here, here is but, here is Zara you know, and, and Mike Tyndall walking up exactly the same room, but, holding oh, hands. Come on, James. Come on, James. I've I've already made that point. Well, that well, what not, point is it you think you've made that they did it ten minutes earlier, so it's okay? If they'd done it well, ten minutes later, part, it, it wouldn't be. They're not part of 
the formal procession, and right. it and it is formal, and therefore be formal. That's, right. that's my point. Okay. But, and finally, so my not, my point I'm again not, is, I mean, where, where does not, one go to find this guidance? I mean, on what basis are these well, people deciding that it was inappropriate behaviour? Uh, well, I think I, I agree with you that it, it, it you know it, it must be a minefield. Also, and, if he's um, not allowed it, to wear it, his uniform, is he still subject to all the other protocols as well? I don't think anybody actually knows the answer to that, do well, they? Well, you do. Um, no, I don't know the answer to it. But here and you I'm, are. I'm, I'm, I know, but you like you're trying to make it very sort of black and white. Or, no, I'm you know, not. I'm, I'm, to the other, I, I'm quite the opposite. I'm trying to understand why anybody would ever have a problem moment, with two people short, holding hands. Um, because I, I just think that that, that that was just such a formal occasion <laughs> that you just need to not do it. What do you think the Queen would have said? Um, she, I think she's very politic, isn't she? And I think so I'd sure like to hold hands with my wife. I'd like to hold hands with my wife, Grandma. Is that okay well, maybe, with you? May, may, maybe if she'd have been there, they wouldn't have done that. I don't know. Um, well, yeah. that, I mean, if, if she'd been there, there wouldn't be a funeral, Claire. I think we can all agree on that. But if if, if, no, if she was I'm, asked I'm, her I'm opinion by that, her grandson, who said, I'd really like to hold Megan's hand at this point in proceedings, how do you feel about that? What do you think she would have said? Um, I, I, I don't know. But, do you think um, she would have said, well, let's check, with, let's check with that, Claire. Let's check with I, Claire no, in Kennington. <laughs> No, I've told you I don't know the, an uh, the absolute answer to when, oh, and you when, when you shouldn't. I think you do, really. I think it's your grandma's funeral. <laughs> and you want to hold your wife's hand. I don't even think there's a, a debate to be had or a conversation to be had. And I, I think you probably know that deep down. But I, I respect you and I thank you for having a crack at trying to explain the behaviour of... Um, of these ghouls and vampires, and, and you know, we must put on the record the argument that it's very, very different to do it at that precise point in proceedings, as opposed to at previous or subsequent points in proceedings when other people did it. From Jim to Joseph in South Tottenham. Joseph, what would you like to say? Yeah, so if she would be paying tax over here, so how much percentage would she have to pay? 38.1. Okay, and now she's paying in India as well tax. So how much tax is she that paying for, there? I don't know that for sure. But if if she wasn't non-domiciled, then she would pay tax here on the income from her overseas... For, well, from the dividends. She wouldn't pay it anywhere else. So she wouldn't be paying there, but it's an well, Indian company. Mate, so she if you're coming to, to me for tax advice, Joseph, I should tell you now that you've, you've found the wrong number. Have you got an opinion yeah, to no, offer, so. or are you just, are you just treating yeah. me like Google? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that she's going to be paying tax over there and over here, so she'd be paying tax twice. So if you say she has to pay here like 38%, I'm assuming over there she's also paying... Good well, you know what Assume does, don't you? Frank's okay, in Rochester. So Frank, what would you like to say? Anna is in Middlesbrough. Anna, what would you like to say? Uh, so, first, before I say it, firstly, I'd like to say that I do agree with probably 99% of your politics. Of course. But I do find sometimes that you're quite condescending. I'm sure and I And think but... that people are thick and come to these conclusions just because, like, they read and hear things. What else happens, um, do you think? So, I come from quite a low-class area, and it is an area where a lot of asylum seekers and refugees get caught. Mm. My dad's a 70-odd-year-old ex-scaffolder. In fact, he was only sca finished scaffolding 67 years ago. Um, <laughs> a few years ago at 67, he was scaffolding up until the age of 67. Yeah. Um, he's now on a pension. He can barely afford to eat or put his heating on, living hand-to-mouth. And we live in an area where there's... It started off with one family... Um, because it's a working class area, but it's a nice area in a working class area. So it's quite sought after accommodation. And they were from Syria. They were put there because they were chased out of another area. The people in where my dad lives welcomed this family. And actually, my dad stood guard on this house one night when oh. some racists were trying to get at them. Mm. Um, but since then, uh, quite a lot of their extended families have been moved into the area. Um, we've seen, like, <laughs> my dad sees them, they've all got nice cars, nice clothes, mobile phones. And it does get my dad upset when he can barely afford to, you know, get a week shopping in. Yes. Um, and does, and he, does I, he believe that they've been given their cars and their phones by, by the government or something like that? 
Well, we do know that they have had a, they do all get a hand up to get started. Now, they are grafters, you know. I'm not taking anything away from them because I actually agree that we do need to help people. So they're working? But some of them are, yeah. The, the males in the family are. The women, obviously, they aren't allowed. Yeah. Um, so um, what, what, what exactly? So they're working, you said they're grafters, so they're working very hard and they've got a car, a nice car. What, 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 what is your dad cross about? No, it's not, it's because it's of the area we live, yeah. and it's like, obviously, if ever, whenever like, any of the council houses has become available, mm. it's been given to uh, an asylum-seeking family. Yeah. And obviously, I know people that work in the local it would, it would. I, I think it would be, housed, it would be someone who's... Uh, okay. furniture and everything provided. They do get a very big hand up to start. Yes. Um, they don't. So, they don't. They don't. Well, how big is it, Anna? Well, they get the houses furnished. They do get provided cars and things like that. They don't get provided um, with cars, Anna. They have done. They don't. From what I've seen. They okay, have. but the thing is now, I have to say, where did you hear that? And you say that I'm condescending because people believe this stuff independently of having been told it by people who aren't telling them the truth, you see. I don't want to be condescending, and, and I understand why you use that word, but where did you hear that the asylum seekers are given free cars? I'm not, I'm not saying all asylum seekers oh, But any, free where cars. did you hear it? I've got friends that work in the local council, that yeah. work that work a part of, of these, and it's, it's again... What it, sort it, of I'm cars do saying, they get? I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, that's like, Precisely for every single one. I'm not. What I'm saying is. No, well, I heard what you're saying. Everyone can hear what in, you're. Everyone can hear what you're saying, Anna. What the area I live in, yeah. and it's always the the asylum seekers are always put in lower class, underprivileged areas, and the reason people get annoyed. Yes. And whether it's right or wrong, well, it is wrong, but it's not because of necessarily that they're getting it's because they're struggling as well what and would your dad help? feel what would they feel like if they were put in smarter areas than where you live where your dad lives well they already wouldn't see them would we i mean no, I'm but if you, you, how many council how many council states have you lived on well two but a long time ago and it doesn't really mean anything in the in the greater scheme of things, because the well, daily. It doesn't work like when they're, well, when let me tell you why. Anywhere, but Anna, the stories. Okay, the stories that. Well, okay, help. you carry on, and then I'll have a go. But this is true, though, because I mean. Is it as I've true as the free cars? You know, you can take the mick out of that, or you. I'm want not to, taking the mick out of it because you'll call me condescending. You've like you've believed something that's not true, Anna. And I, I, I don't know how I can help you, but let's focus on the housing bit because if 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 they were put in a in Mayfair or Belgravia, or if let's just say they were put in a in an area where your dad can't afford to live, then that would be the thing that they were getting cross about as well. But Unle unless case, they actually you, object you're, to you're, the proximity. You're, you're no, it's not a case of the proximity. What is it, when then? they can't get the houses that are available... But who can't get... Your dad's I'm got a about, house. I'm not... On a, I'm on about... I know that... Because there's your people in the area... Yes. Like, well, I'll take, for instance, then. My sister recently, she was private renting. They weren't wanted the house back. My sister was trying to get a house, and she couldn't get a house for love and the money. Yes. So, so where is she now? Renting again. She's having a private rent again. Well, but she she was and she has she, she, she got has a house two then. Children. Yeah, but eventually, and again, it what's was the ninety nine percent of my politics you agree with, Anna? Just out of interest. Because I'm not saying that we shouldn't be helping. What I'm saying is the you reason people they shouldn't are getting be, angry. They shouldn't. Well, I'm, I don't. Not, but you're getting angry I'm about not, free cars that don't exist and about no, people being housed but, in the poorest parts of town. Whereas if they were being put, that, and I've been, I'm not. No, but I'm not, I'm not getting angry. I'm trying to explain why people. Are angry, but they're angry about frustrated. things that aren't real. But that is real, though, James. But you're saying that isn't real okay. about the housing. It's true. No, but your your, your sister's got but a house. The, the, and if they put them in areas, if they put them in smarter parts of, if they put them in smarter parts of town, but when people then people would be houses, even angrier. Why they would get upset? Of, when... of course they can. If they were homeless people who could afford to pay rent and couldn't get a house. That was being given, and also, I don't think asylum seekers get houses. You'd have to have had your application actually fully processed at that point, where you become an actual refugee. You are a successful 
applicant for asylum. And, and I, listen, I do well, understand... Well, to say it's a great because I know for a fact... I do understand. Well, you knew for a fact out. they were getting free cars a minute ago. I mean, we can't keep going round in circles. Right, again, I didn't say... I said I've seen it and I've been told. I didn't yeah. say I knew for a fact. And then when I, when I say that that's not true, you call me condescending. Uh, actually, I said I find it quite condescending at times, James. But yes. I, I said they agree with what you I don't know how to help, you see, because be, people believe things that aren't true, that encourage them to harbour negative <laughs> thoughts and feelings towards refugees. And when I point out that the things aren't true, I, you, you think I'm condescending. I don't know what to do about, with those three facts, Anna. I really don't. I've got no beef with you, and your dad sounds like a lovely bloke. He really does stand in guard outside the house, but the feelings of the people that wanted to attack the house are the feelings that you're describing. But that's, again, that's what you've got, you've completely turned everything I've said I around. haven't. I've just repeated you it are, back to you. you. No, you haven't at all. Okay. I'm saying the reason why people do get upset at times, and I've said that we do need help, it's not an easy answer, but the, this is really happening in a lot of work. But, the, but it isn't, you see, the car, the, the free country. cars, it's not really happening. But you keep going back to that. And I've said, because like, that's okay, the most okay, inflammatory okay, thing that you said, and I think it was in a British National Party manifesto in 2011. But I'm, I'm only saying from people... It was a lie then, and it's a lie now. Okay, fair enough, then we'll call that a lie. But when we come to a housing situation, that's not a lie. But, well, no, of course it's not a lie, but everybody needs somewhere to live, and if they were putting the people uh, that we're talking about in... I know, the, but can you... You so can't what I'm keep... Saying is, this is why people get upset. Yes, but they'd be they, even more upset if they were being put in smarter parts of town. This is, this is why it's such a reductive argument, is that they, they, they put the asylum seekers in the cheapest property available. Now, I your feel, your but, argument is, but there are some people who were born here who want the cheapest property available as well. I've got no beef with that, but if they put them somewhere not else... Wanting it. Not wanting okay. it. Not wanting it. Not a case of, I want that house. I, I need a house. Yes, I need house but if they put well. the asylum seekers or the, or the refugees who are often fleeing torture and persecution and living on £5.83 a day, if they, if they put them somewhere else, somewhere smarter, then people in the part of town you're talking about would be absolutely livid and the sun would have it on their front page. You remember the stories about the single mother with, from, from Syria with eight children and a mansion in Maida Vale? So whichever, whatever happens, unless you give these people no help at all... Whatever happens, what you're describing here is okay, legit. I'm not saying no, you've got to let help. me finish one sentence, Anna. <laughs> you say you're not condescending. No, I'm really not. <laughs> I'm just asking you to let me finish one sentence because you can't hear what I'm saying if you're talking. Whatever okay. they did, the, the feelings you're describing would, would still exist. There's nothing that can be done differently. If they put them somewhere more salubrious, more wealthy, then the anger would be greater. It would make the front pages of national newspapers. If, if, if they were denied housing whatsoever, where, where would they be? You'd have people, families sleeping on the streets. There's, there's nothing that could be done better. Once you accept the need to help, the help can always be described in a way that will enrage people. And you've described it very well. It, what you just I, I'm trying to say yes it does but this is where the plot is starting because there's not enough space people are crying out for help as well yes I'm not I'm not arguing with you but whatever help like that, but yes so how uh, like normal working class people like I'm not saying that they are right. I'm saying this is why... I know you are, and I agree with you, and I've just explained, I hope, that whatever the help looked like, the people you're talking about would be successfully enraged. Whatever the help looked like. Any help at all, the people you're talking about would have the feelings <laughs> you're describing. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's all I've got. I'm three minutes late for the news. Okay. What, whatever um, the help looked like. And we'll agree about the free cars. You can spread the word, yeah? Uh, and, and possibly even talk to the people at the council that told you. But it's good that you agree with 99% of my politics. Three minutes after 11 is the time. Did she just call me a rude name at the end? 
it was all going so well. Aidan's in, in uh, Olag. Uh, what would you like to Hello. say, Aidan? I, I, didn't, I wonder Hello, why this James, is such a European flavour, this conversation, but actually Kieran has kind of reminded us of why it is of, of, of um, r such relevance. Um, I, I, I live in Olag, but I'm actually from Dorky in South Kent. I only moved here a short time ago. I'm, I'm in Dorky in June for the book festival, Aidan, so I shall send your love home. Okay, that's very kind of you. Um, I have to agree fully with my fellow Dubliner. Yeah. Um, it's embarrassing the way the European Union is behaving. What really should happen is this is seen as a fight for democracy. Every yeah. European Union wow. country, and I would also include the UK as an associate of course. Uh, country, should send a contingent of troops to Ukraine and let Vladimir Putin, who is a murderous psychopath, know that he's not just picking a fight with one small European country, he's picking a fight with all of us. I also object very strongly, James, to your equivalency between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. Donald Trump, whether you like him or dislike him, and I know that actually most of you guys on the left, or pretend to be on the left, um, to, you know, rail against him continuously. Yes. Because he was elected with uh, a huge number of people. I mean, 75 yes, I know, I did, I did make that point, but, but, but when he lost, he incited a, a, a riot he that was... He, he didn't actually, oh, okay. sorry. I've okay. actually watched that speech. Okay. And I've watched it more than once. Well, we shall both it's follow. We'll point. both follow the investigation with great interest. But just in conclusion, why is he refusing to hand over all the documents from the White House about what actually happened in the run-up to it? You know as well as I do, James, that sometimes the legalese can actually catch you out without <laughs> you doing anything wrong. So why That's is he not handing over any of the documents? But then let's just stick with Vladimir Putin. I mean, no, no, let's true. not. You, you no, made it about me. I'm happy to play. I'm happy to play it. I'm happy to play it that way around. No, James, he murdered people in London using nuclear weapons. Yes, and, you're actually and people and and and, and, and Donald Trump unleashed a mob on the Capitol who had the actual vice the president in their no, sights. Sorry, that's not true. Though. Okay, well then we'll have another conversation about why he won't release any of the documents into what happened on the day. Well, I, I, I say uh, because the legalese might trip him up. Be because the legalese might trip him up, Aidan. James, that's it's on the record. It's on. The, I mean, that's, that's your response. This, this is a typical. Of, of, like, you remind me of my best friend. He's a doctor in Brighton. Well, that's a that's a lovely compliment, years. which I will which I will take to the bank. You, you you remind me of one of my best friends as well, Aidan. Paul's in Bath. Paul, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. Yeah, good morning. Just really two points, and, and um, one's from quite some time ago. But I was in the armed forces as a, a, a very young officer for about eight, ten years. Um, and I was uh, on a short service commission, which effectively means, uh, you know, for gig economy, I didn't know this at the time, but I was um, made redundant without any redundancy pay. I was actually just summarily dismissed mm. because they decided to remodel and reshape the armed forces for the future. And this goes on all the time. So I don't really buy the argument that you can't change someone's terms and conditions when the, the current climate, technology, advances, things are happening and changing all the time. No, but you, you, you said you didn't that. realize what your terms and conditions were. Well, I was 19 when I signed up for the army. Yes. I, I got commissioned as an officer. I thought I was in for life, and I committed my life to the army. I went on some pretty horrendous operational tours. Uh, I, no pay rises, no no ability to strike, no crown immunity. Yes. Now all these things happened, and, to the and no forces, rights and no or really no them. rights or protections when they decided to get rid of you. So I, I don't, I'm not I mean, quite I, sure I what you're... Are you, two you, weeks notice. Yes, I, I know, that's, that. that's, that's appalling. Are you suggesting yeah. that because that happened to you, you're in favour of it happening to other people? No, but what, what, I what are you suggesting people, then? I'm suggesting that things do change and you have to sit down there at the table and negotiate and compromise but both that, sides. That, that's what they're doing. You didn't have that right. And Liz, no, Truss, Liz Truss is pledging to take that right away. No, I, and, I, and I don't agree with that. But what I do agree with is the idea that there, there are reasonable things happening right now that people are making big sacrifices for in the private sector as well. So the idea of just saying we're going to strike and make your lives a misery unless you give us more money, when I then and I, I may not they just, be just want to, they just the want to pay, they just want a pay rise that recognises inflation because if they don't get a pay rise that, that, that outstrips that. inflation, then every year they're earning less than the year before. So in the private sector, I've not had a pay rise for eight years. You Do are doing that strike, thing, Paul. That's not that, Paul, mate. You, well, you are. You may not realise it, but you are very much. And I'm very grateful to you for ringing in because I think you speak for millions. You're jealous. Uh, Paul, not so much. What I am no, concerned about absolutely is and, and categorically. This, no, you're you're jealous. You you're literally telling me that you got shafted yeah. by your employer in the past. So you don't see why these employees should have any 
right of recourse with their employees. They should suck it up just like you had to. And now you're telling me that in your current working life, you don't have protections, you don't have a union speaking up for you, so why the hell should the railway workers have one? No, no, honestly, no, I don't believe they shouldn't have a union, but I believe the union are wielding too much power in the sense that they could bring the country to its knees pretty so what, much How much will. power do you think they should be allowed to have, Paul? Sufficient to sit around the table and negotiate and compromise on behalf of their members. And if the employer doesn't deal. compromise? Say again? If the employer doesn't compromise, then what should they be allowed to do? Then, then there should be recourse to a higher body, to an arbitration committee that says you're being unreasonable. The, I, government's I refusing, wanna... the government's refusing to speak to the unions. And they're at fault as well, and we shouldn't be voting so, for a government but, but, that, that don't well, sit around the table. Unfortunately, that's really... the government we've got, and that's the government that the unions have to that. deal with. So, yeah. so if they can't go on strike, what can they do to stop employers treating them like you were treated as a young man? Well, I'm... I'm not just, sure. Just Paul, pause for a minute. Just think about the question, Paul. Did. No, wait, because I, I, okay. I don't want the railway workers okay. to be treated like you were when you were slung out of the army. No, I agree. All I right? Agree. So if they're going to do that to a workforce, what can the union do to stop it from happening? Well, I, I mean, you know, the only recourse other than strike action would be some case of law that protects them, for, that forces the government to get round the table and negotiate. Liz Truss, I just played you a clip of them. Liz Truss promising to water down the law that currently protects workers. So in the world we live in, yeah. a trade union that wants to protect its members from being treated in the way you were treated as a young man, what weapon would you allow them to have? Well, I think that, I think we have enough frameworks and structures in our country now to but that we says clearly you have don't to sit the table and no, but we, we clearly don't because that is what they are doing. So when so the employer to to body. We need to go to the you keep repeating yourself because you know, you know you know Paul that the yeah. only truly meaningful recourse they have is industrial action and and, and you've realised that in the course of this conversation and I, and I don't want to embarrass you by labouring the point. But that, yeah. that is precisely what we've been talking about all morning. Because you didn't get looked after when you felt you should have been. You've been turned into a person who doesn't think other people should be looked after either. Because you can talk all you like about arbitration or compromises or legislative frameworks. This is a government, and Liz Truss's government is, is clearly going to be committed to this, that wants to strip away the protections that they already have. And you've been persuaded that that's a good idea, largely because you don't have any yourself. Uh, OK, I, I, yeah, I think it's slight, slightly over pegging it there, James. I don't believe they should you know have everyone's listening, that there don't should you? be a, a structure where the government don't have the ability to say, we're not talking to you, and that the, the unions don't have a retort to say, well, in that case, we're going on strike. If that's the only option, there we that's are. not adult, that's not, that's not sensible. We need to have a different kind of structure that well, says... Well, well, no, you see, you know, you're, so nearly, you're so nearly there then. So, I mean, the, yeah. here's the point. If, if an employer is as inconsiderate and as unreasonable as the army was to you... What could, if all of you and your comrades were in an organisation dedicated to protecting you and your comrades from unfair employment practices, from uh, exploitative employment practices, what could you do to fight back? Yeah, I, OK, so let me just be absolutely clear. I, I don't think I was exploited in that sense. I mean, I was on a contract that I should have known better. I should have known at 19 what if, my if, employment if contract was. Yeah, so my what, point of that, James, what, though, was... What, you what could you all have James. done collectively together to resist unfair treatment? What would have been the most effective weapon in your arsenal? An unfair treatment from your employer directed at a small number of your comrades but you're all going to join forces to resist it what would be the most effective way of resisting it paul well i don't agree with it but it would have been to lay down our weapons and, and not do what we were signed up to do it would be to completely yeah to don't turn up to work so you, you so so the only the recourse risk. the only recourse yeah. to justice that you had is something that you don't agree with I mean, the army is a special case, of course, but you wouldn't if, extend if that to railway if your workers. Your father's on an operating table, and all the surgeons go on strike. What do you do? Do you think, oh, that's fine? They need they need more money because they're they're working really hard. But my dad just died of a heart attack on an operating table. I don't, that's where I don't agree. If nurses okay. can go well, on strike. You, we both know, don't we, that that they're not going to go out on strike in the middle of an operation, Paul. 
So uh, well, again, okay, I, I don't want to, Im- I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you. But we're talking about railway workers today, and yeah, you have, okay. and you have, and I think still, I'm not going to be able to quite crack the final nut here. But your opposition to industrial action is built upon envy, because you don't have recourse to those sorts of protections and rights. And here's the thing that perhaps I should have said a little earlier. I think you deserve them too. Hmm. No, I'm not sure. That, okay, I'm not sure that would work with the armed forces. If they're not are in the armed forces, and... Paul, they threw you out because you didn't understand your terms and conditions and you didn't have a union. I think you deserve them too. And and the mystery okay. of today's phone in is why you don't think you deserve them. Well, but, you know, you sign up to a job. You do the job as best as you can. Things do change, and you have to adapt. And if that means you need less soldiers and less officers, then some have to go. You're not, and you're I not in the army anymore. The wind. No, but are you referring back to that situation? No, I'm not. I'm talking the, about you today. To soldiers and officers today, and right now, I think you deserve the protection and the dignity that a union can afford. And I'm very, very sorry that you don't have it. Okay. Can I make one very final point? Because I did say two. And the, the, the last one is this, and I, I may have the exact figures wrong, but my understanding is a junior doctor does about seven years' worth of training and comes out on about 40 grand a year as a junior doctor in a, in a ward somewhere. Something like that, I'm, I'm led to believe. And, and you, you may tell me it's a lot less or a lot, lot more, but I'm pretty sure it's about 40 grand. Well, and, your point and as is, I understand it, an average train driver's on about 48 oh, grand. We've, they want already, more. we've already covered this. Number one, the train drivers aren't on strike today. And number two, that is an argument for paying doctors more, not for paying railway workers less, Paul. Why is it not the other way around? Though? Why is it not that the doctors are, paying, <laughs> are getting enough and the train drivers are getting too much? How, how is that not a valid because, argument? Because the doctors don't have the... Uh, union strength that the railway workers have. And just like you, I wish they did. Just like I wish you did. Do you see it now? Is, is £48,000 the right you get amount it? of money you just for someone made that number. You just, backwards you just, and drive a train? Oh, is and now you're getting that. So now we're, going down, now we're going down the Rupert Murdoch route, route. I mean, what do you want me to do? Remind you of the recent rail disasters where people have died? Well, you pretend no, that. that it's a you pretend that it's a trivial job. Just just but accept the, no, no, the generous. No, no, no James. No, I'm the, not just it's accept trivial, the I'm generous and what enough, you are. You're enough. just saying pushing a lever no. all day long. That is a yeah, description of, of something trivial. All right, I've done my best. James, I've done my best, best, Paul. I wish that you had access to the sort of rights and protections that railway workers have, and I hope that soon you'll see that wanting them to be stripped of theirs won't make you feel any better at all about your life. Raymond's in Oxbridge. Raymond, what would you like to say? I'd like to ask well, what you think the mindset of these people who put their families into dinghies into, in, in the middle of winter to cross the channel is why do they want to come to Britain that badly when they're in a safe and civilised country like France? Yes. I mean, there are a number of answers to that question that that I've heard provided. I'll, I'll begin with the overarching one rather than the specifics, which is incredibly, Raymond, and I think this is particularly resonant on a morning like this, the calculation is that they would rather get into that dinghy than, than stay where they are. <laughs> I don't understand it. I, I can't ever mean. Okay, well, let me try. It. Let me let me try and let me try and explain that the life that they want to lead depends upon reaching the United Kingdom. The life that they don't want to lead, particularly if they're in one of these camps in Calais or they are in a country where they know nobody and don't speak the language is so intolerable that they are prepared to risk their lives and hand over their life savings to get into a leaky dinghy. I I, I may have misunderstood your question, but it's blindingly obvious to me why people would do it. Well, uh, now, this is what I can't understand. Go on. These people have learned English. Now, once your brain has learned one foreign language, it's programmed to learn more. How many do they you speak? Learn, uh, me, I only speak English, but, but I'm not going But, anywhere. but your brain is programmed to learn more. Yeah, yes. No, I'm saying that, that these people could learn French, settle down in France, have a France, France, France takes country. France takes way more people than we do, and and possibly they. Yes, but, but, Possibly they have relatives here. Okay, let's imagine they have relatives here then, Raymond. Actually, no, let me turn it... Australia, but I don't... 
risk my life to go and see them. Because the life you have here is not intolerable. I mean, we could go round in circles, but let me ask you instead, why do you think they do it? Because they want to come here and claim benefits, get housing. But they're not allowed to claim benefits. And they only, well, they only have access to housing if their asylum application is processed. And we accept a fraction of the asylum applications that other countries accept. So that's just not true. That's, that's not the reason. They want to work in the black economy. Okay, so why don't we allow them to work in the legitimate economy? Because we've got to quite enough workers our own, thank you very much. But we haven't. We've got record levels of job vacancies everywhere from, from the NHS to the haulage industry. Oh, that will soon disappear. How? Under the recession that's coming. Right. So you think that more unemployment then, will, will reduce the number of job vacancies? Well, I think it... it how is the recession... Just talk me through, though. Raymond, if you would. Talk me through how a recession increases the number of nurses. Sorry, you broke up a bit there. Say again. I said just talk us through how a recession increases the number of nurses in a country. Well, it doesn't increase the number of nurses. Well, you said and the recession would fix. Yeah, you said the recession would right fix. Now. You said the recession would soon fix the shortages in the NHS. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't say anything of the sort. So Why do we call him back? I said yes. that the jobs would reduce. So what jobs? Yeah. What jobs would reduce, Raymond? Whatever jobs these um, and and stop calling them refugees. They're migrants. They're young single men. They're migrants. Well, I don't think gender economic migrants. Uh, but d gender or um, marital status doesn't distinguish between a refugee and a non-refugee, does it? Well, maybe not. But so why would you mention is, that then? Why, why would you mention that? Not, are they coming here? Hmm. Because they're terrified of life in Tirana. Well, you're talking about Albanians now, which is the invitation you've been given by many of the most disingenuous well, they're, they're, contributors they're to public discourse. But Rishi Sunak announced yesterday a scheme very similar to what they have in Germany that will address very specifically the Albanian issue, which leaves us wondering about African refugees and Syrian refugees, Iraqi refugees, Iranian refugees. You've seen, yes, the, news, you've right. seen the news in Iran, Raymond, lately. You've seen the people getting executed for expressing opinions that are about 10% as strident as yours. I wonder why... Syrians are our responsibility. Syria was a French colony. Right. Why are the Syrians not going to? to so we France? should accept we should accept everyone from former English colonies. Then should we under that logic? No. I'm oh, just hang on. Specific question. Don't, well, the, uh, why should why should France accept Syrians then? If we shouldn't accept everyone from um, former B British colonies, I don't understand your logic, I Raymond. I think that possibly makes two of us. On the whole, most uh, former British colonies are safe, are safe places. Right. Because that's how we left them. Uh, okay. Can I ask you one final question? Yes. Where do you get most of your news from? Most of my news, mm. I get it off uh, BBC TV. Okay. And your opinions? My opinions are with the people I mix with up the pub, I think. Okay. That's my social group. Okay. Well, enjoy, uh, enjoy, your, mainly, enjoy um, your pint tonight, Raymond. Um, no, I should be watching the footy tonight. Okay. Well, enjoy your pint tomorrow, then. Okay. You take care. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, James. Bye, Raymond. Um, we don't know the number of people that died in the English Channel yet, but we do know that the milk of human kindness is unlikely to be extended to either them or their grieving families by, uh, by some people. Matthew's in Camberwell. Matthew, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Um, you, you, you pointed out that you, you can't put your finger on exactly why Rishi Sunak, being very wealthy, should uh, reduce his credibility when it comes to giving financial advice to, to people who are not wealthy. Um, I, I think I can now. I think Graham and Tom have helped me get, get, get there. 
Oh, okay. Well, the 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 answer I was going to give yes. is because I don't I don't think there is actually a reason. I, I agree. It's kind of um, maybe counterintuitive, and maybe it, it feels a bit like a slap in the face to be if you're not well off and you're told by a multimillionaire, "Look, here's how you tighten your belt." Yes. But I think it's no, but it's more it's more than being told to tighten your belt. It's taking the decision to to, to make the belt tighter. Well, I mean, that's his, his, his job is to take decisions which will affect people. But I think, um, well, exactly. I think ultimately it might be a little bit lazy to say you're wealthy, therefore yes. your opinion is, is no good or maybe is, is less good. I think the hard work of it, and it's a lot well, more we, boring... We, we've established that it it's, well. it's certainly not going to be universal. There'll always be exceptions. To, to, I mean, some very, very wealthy people give all their money away, don't they? And some dedicate their entire lives to trying to accrue more. But to tell, well, is, to tell Graham... To you tell Graham to his policies and his voting record... Yes, and, and if I look at his policies and his voting record, I see no evidence at all that he's tried to improve the lives of the poorest people in the country. Or do I? Well, that's that's, that's absolutely fair enough. Yeah. And if and if you if you want to deduce that from his voting record and his policies and his actual performance, absolutely fine. But I think using his wealth as a proxy for his motivations and his his credibility and his policies is is potentially slightly lazy. Uh, like yeah, I do as up. well. I think it's potentially slightly lazy, but by no means definitely lazy. And I guess th th there is a... I don't know whether threshold is, Matthew, but, but I mean, and I don't know what the word enough means. It's going to mean different things to different people, isn't it? But the... I mean, the dedicated pursuit of money to a point that it becomes the guiding light... And then once achieved, on a scale the rest of us can only dream of, a desire to go into politics as a right-wing politician. I think there's a strong case for suggesting that, that... I mean, the problem is you couldn't have the rule because of the possible exceptions to it. But you shouldn't be allowed anywhere near power if you've got epic wealth. Because even if it's subconscious, the, the temptation to protect epic wealth to the detriment of the rest of society is going to be insuperable for many people. Well, I think I think that that could certainly be the case. But the other, I mean, and I'm just being devil's advocate re really here because I'm right. no fan of Sunak or the rest of the Tories. But the, another way of looking at an extremely wealthy politician yes. is they're less likely to be possibly bribed. I mean, I can't see Sunak. Well, I mean, maybe I'm being naive here, but I yes. can't see Sunak with all his millions of pounds taking a dodgy loan to try to redecorate his flat. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's, yeah, well, no, that's you can, I can't argue advantage. with that. You never know. But uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. Johnson potentially morally compromised still further by his own lack of a fortune but yeah i mean i, I don't know if that counts as much of a qualification he, he won't he won't be as dodgy as boris johnson because he's got so much money in the bank rob's in tring rob what made you pick up the phone hey morning james i hope i hope i've been uh, worth waiting for and um, i think both <laughs> boris and um george um yes have i think sophie put a, a finger on it when she said they have a lack of experience and also, I think they come so, from... So do most people listening to this programme have no yeah, experience but, of, of, of okay, what we're talking but, about. But if I, if I asked you what was, the, what was the price of a pint of milk, would you be able to tell me? You know, I don't suppose George would be able to, for example. But why does that matter even? I mean, again, that's the kind of... Uh, Rhetoric that used to that used to go alongside talking about flat screen televisions and and yeah. and all we, that. We are, Does it matter? Always... You don't have to know how much a pint of milk is to know it what it's it like not helps. to be able to afford. Well, I, I, yeah, of course it might, it might, it might well, help, but that's, the question is, what, what is it like not to be able to afford a pint of milk? The question is not how much does a pint... Actually, I am going to disagree with you on that. I think that's precisely the sort of lazy journalism that helped create the myth that there was a, 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 a kind of... A, <laughs> I don't know, an explanation for poverty. And here is a politician. I remember when David Cameron answered a question about bread by saying he made his own, and Rishi Sunak answered one recently. It shows that they're out of touch, but you can still... I might have ten different types of bread in my, right, in my yeah. larder. I can still imagine what it's like not to have any. OK, OK. Um, but they, they obviously don't have all of the answers, and I think we're all responsible for ourselves. You know, I remember back in the 70s when the uh, interest rates went up to something like 15%. I just moved house and I didn't have a penny to my name, and all of a sudden I had to take the shirt off my back as well. And I, and I survived by doing other things, uh, not because the government helped me, because I helped myself. And right. I, I, I got off my backside and I did things. Also, also, James, you're sitting there in your nice warm office, um, and come the winter, you'll still be sitting in your nice warm office there. And Elsie and people like me won't be. So what do we do? Well, I like Elsie. I jump on the bus and I go to shopping. Sorry, just in a, in a sentence, warm. Rob, what, what, what have you rung in? What point have you rung in to make? 
Well, you were asking a question. You you were asking you were asking the question about Elsie about. No, Boris. no, I asked the question about how these two politicians who are in charge of pretty much everything relevant to the conversation we're having can be utterly unaware of the reality. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure they are, but I, I, I don't think I don't think. So you think that people you think that people struggling to pay their food bills, Rob, are unaware of cheaper food. No, I don't. I so don't. how can George but, but, Eustace but clearly, think that? Clearly, George, clearly George doesn't know. How can, why are you calling uh, him by his first name, mate? He wouldn't cross the road to oh, wee well, on you well, if you Eustace, were on fire. Oh, well, George what, Eustace How can he know. not know? How can he think that people who are struggling to pay their food bills are unaware of cheaper because food? Because he comes from a point of ignorance. Because he, he, he doesn't have that experience. But he thinks they should just get off their backsides and look after themselves, doesn't he, like you do? Well, you... you yeah, yeah, you know, next time I, I you ring in, Rob. Next time, or, or next George time, Houston. next time you ring in, mate. Get your thoughts in order before you get on air, would oh, you? Oh, James. Paul is in Surbiton. Paul, what do you think? Well, I've sort of um, changed my mind a little bit listening to some of your previous callers. Yeah. I think I, I don't think it, it should be continued because I don't. I'm not sure how genuine it is. I'm not sure how heartfelt it is. I'm sure some of the players who do it do genuinely mean it, but I think a lot of them are doing it because they're told to or their mates are doing it. I think by, I sort of, by the I law of that. averages, there's going to be a lot of players or a significant number of players who are doing it because they have to, and, and if it was left well, up to them, well, they wouldn't. I yeah. wonder if any will carry on doing it, even though they no longer have to. Well, you imagine in the 30s and the 40s when the German national team all used to have to give the Nazi salute before games. How many of them were actually Nazis? I mm. bet maybe none of them were. But they were doing it because they were told to, and everyone else was doing it too. I, I, don't, know that that's, I don't know that's a really helpful analogy, because it's, it's, it's well, almost like it's, allying yourselves with the forces of good. You're now comparing uh, it to allying yourself with the forces of evil. Well, I think if you think that all of the evil people lived in one country and all the good people lived in another country, that's a little bit silly, isn't it? You no, but, all, but all, all, all of the Nazis lived in one country, mate. Uh, no, they it didn't. Was, it was a German. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a German political. Well, let's not get bogged down in in, yeah, in, in a slightly I, I, odd. But I, don't, I mean, if you're going to think of an example of people doing <laughs> something more through habit and requirement than through mm -hmm. commitment and and and, and principle, I, I probably wouldn't reach for for, for the Nazi well, salute. If, if, you, if you think, that I think you why know, not go for the sign of the cross? A lot of people who do the sign of the cross are not necessarily yeah, sure. devout Christians, but, but you're not sure. comparing them to Adolf Hitler fans, you see. So we, I think we'll scratch that and replace it with the sign of the cross. You see, a lot of people do the sign of the cross. It doesn't mean that they actually believe in transubstantiation or other elements of Christian doctrine. They're just doing the sign of the cross because they're, they're supposed to, and that dilutes it, maybe. But a lot of those people who made the sign of the cross might have been in the Spanish Inquisition. And, I tr uh, mate, I tried to give you a way out. I absolutely did my best to, to steer the conversation back onto slightly... Um, uh, less choppy waters, but that off you go with the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, Kevin's in Finchley. Kevin, what would you like to say? <laughs> well, um, I'm not sure how I can follow that. But, uh, <laughs> I wasn't. I'll tell you what, Kevin. I wasn't expecting the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's in Ilford. Nick, what would you like to say? Hi there. Um, just to refer to that text you just read, I, I do agree it's wrong to um, attack his wife. Um, no one's attacking her. They... No one's attacking his wife. So just pick up on okay, the Churchill Chris, point. Sorry. Take up, pick up on the Churchill point. Then how would you deal with Churchill's wife taking um, money well, out of Nazi that, Germany? That, that that actually was a war. Uh, I think if the state has changed between um, the UK and Russia and it became an actual war. It would be different. Um, okay. It's not a war at the moment. But it somewhat relates to uh, my original point is that I think everyone sitting at those tables at the G20 is a hypocrite because Russia is still selling oil to China and China is selling that oil to the rest of the world at vastly marked up prices. Mm. I don't see the difference. Uh, really? Mm. So China's invaded Ukraine, has it? No, no, it isn't. But it's, it, we're, we're well, that's oil the difference. From China. But, but China's buying oil from Russia and we're buying... Yeah, no, I, I heard, I heard what you said. China. You said you couldn't see what the difference was. So I'm just telling you, but, the difference is that China hasn't invaded Ukraine. We're not currently sanctioning Chinese oligarchs because of their associations with Vladimir Putin's murderous regime. I, I, I appreciate... No, no I understand no, your point about hypocrisy hmm. and finances, but you must understand my point when you ask me what the difference is. I'm telling you that China hasn't invaded Ukraine. 
Well, neither has his wife. We, t- we, we. No, but Russia it, has, it be, and she's taking money out of a country that even McDonald's has ceased to do business in. No, that's correct. But we're circumventing the sanctions by no. going through oh, China. I see. Okay. So everyone is corrupt and everyone is hypocritical. So there's no point ever taking a stand against anyone. Well, no, I think we should take a stand, but we need against to do, who, then? We need to do it from the moral uh, the moral high ground. Against who then? I mean, we could. Well, we can make that argument about lots of things. Why do we do... No, but I don't. I want to make it about this. Uh, what do we do about this? I don't think it's any of our business what her, what his wife does. He doesn't get to tell her what to do. She probably doesn't get to tell her family what they do. So the UK Prime Minister shouldn't be expressing an opinion on whether businesses should continue to trade in Russia? Um, no, not if it's done within but, the... But they have. The I mean, we have an actual sanctions regime. In place, you disapprove of that because they're selling oil to China. You think it's hypocritical to sanction Russia and not China? Um, you must do logically, mustn't you? Let me answer the question for you. Obviously, you do. There are sanctions in place against Russia, but unless but they're unless hypocritical, aren't they? Because we're not sanctioning China. Um, well, I think we're hypocritical because we're buying oil through China. Well, you've already said that, but I'm pushing you to the point about Russia being sanctioned and that being hypocritical because they're selling oil to China. Well, I, I personally think the sanctions against Russia only hurt the people. They don't really affect... So you're um, opposed to sanctions as well? The government. I'm not opposed. And you're opposed to the UK Prime well. Minister expressing a view on whether businesses should be trading with a country that's mounting an illegal war in Ukraine. Is, is there any action against Russia that you'd approve of? Um, I, I think the world coming together in, in, legi- in a legitimate way... Um, Keep, yeah, just just an example of that. Is there any action against Is there any action against Russia you'd approve of? Um, I think we're getting yeah, close. To, it, I think we're getting it, close it, to it here, Nick, aren't we? Is there any action at all? Is there any action at all against Vladimir Putin's Russia that you'd approve of? Uh, yes, if it's effective. And Go it's on, not give me an example then. Go- I don't know. I'm not. Uh, it, it, so I'm nothing not you can think of against Vladimir Putin's Russia as he mounts an illegal war in Ukraine, kills and rapes civilians in their thousands. Nothing you can think of would be an effective counter to that. Well, okay, let's talk. Let's talk about. No, 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 the, no. no. The Just let, let's answer the question I'm asking, I'm champ. Gonna, Come on. I'm going to answer the question. Go on then. We, give me an example of something you'd approve of. But I, I approve with the sanctions as far as oil goes, but we need to... No, you don't? You think through. they're hypocritical? Well, they are hypocritical, so we should... So you approve of hypocrisy now? No, we should stop... Well, we should stop buying oil from China. OK, there it is. That'll teach Russia a lesson. Alex is an actor. And Alex, what made you pick up the phone? Well, I just think that there's a bit of scapegoating going on, because the reality is that the politicians are reflecting the British public. We've already voted for this guy hmm. twice, knowing that he's a scurrilous liar with no integrity. Brexit followed by I don't, a huge, I don't, I don't, a huge um, majority. Yeah, no, obviously I'm not going to argue with your arithmetic, but, but I mean, I speak to these people quite a lot, not as much as I used to, admittedly, but they were pretty adamant that he wasn't a scurrilous liar with no integrity. They, they were pretty adamant that he was, um, a, a, you know, messianic <laughs> in his appeal. I think his parenting record sort of speaks for itself. Yeah, to I you and me it does, and to people who genuinely care about parenting issues, as opposed to people who simply pretend or who turn a blind eye when it's someone they like behaving abominably, like a sort of character from a Jeremy Kyle episode or, 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 or shameless. So it's not that. And, and I understand yeah. your point, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the MPs who publicly said that they were minded to do the right thing when the report was published, and I believed them at the time, I really did, and so it's the question of why they have now decided not to do the right thing. I think at the time, they thought that this might finally bring the Boris bandwagon to an end. Yes. And over the course of the last few months, they've realised that it probably won't. Yeah, that's at the strong. end of the day, mm. At the end of the day, we, do we need the CEO to be the high priest? Uh, when you look at it, it's a choice of options. I've been forced to vote for Boris, even mm. though I can't stand him on a moral, personal level, sure. because of a paucity of options. I think there was a there was a, um, a caller on Nick's show earlier describing Keir as a as a woke thunderbird, and I thought it was a really rather apt <laughs> description. Well, you know what I do if someone uses that word? I ask them what they mean by woke, and the weird thing is they never know. But um, I, I, well, I, I can well, see why well, that might have been your calculation. In, so go, go on. <laughs> 
he, he's entirely likely he's played it in a way that he's going to take he's going to he's going to he's going to carry the can and lose his job because of ruled indiscretions while his main opponent but that is won't. that that is the prioritization of principle over ambition i mean that's precisely what you're supposed to want in a political leader I know I couldn't I couldn't agree more and don't get me wrong I'm a, I'm a Lib Dem refugee. Well, you just called him a woke course. thunderbird and and what I he's what the caller the caller the caller. But well, you said you liked the description and what what he has done is say do you know what it's time somebody actually made a stand and said I'm going to put the principles and the integrity of being a politician above personal ambition and personal reward. I don't know what more a man could do to earn respect from an electorate rather than the kind of abuse you've just regurgitated. Well, he totally failed to engage the British public. I think I was, that's not I was what we're really talking about, though. That's not, really that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about his decision, which I imagine was a very difficult one to take, to actually give the people evidence that not all politicians are the same. If it hasn't landed with you, Alex, with respect, it's because you don't care as much about integrity as you think you do. Oh, that's a bit harsh. I'm just talking. About, not, well, give me a better explanation give, give then. For the why? Choice. No, give me a better explanation for why you're regurgitating schoolboy insults over a man who has actually done what you came on this program to tell me that you think political leaders should well, do. Is it? Because he hasn't been able to engage anybody with policy. So all you're the, just all repeating yourself again now. We're to, you're repeating yourself again now. We're no, specifically no, talking no. about his yeah. promise to resign if he's found to have broken the law. The polar opposite conduct of what Boris Johnson has done. The man you called a scurrilous liar with no integrity. So Keir Starmer has demonstrated integrity. He has yeah, failings clear, and clearly, he has failings clearly. and flaws galore. But if he's demonstrated precisely the integrity you're criticising Boris Johnson for not having, how can you be regurgitating schoolboy insults about him instead of pointing to him and saying there's an example of how it can be done? Well, no, because I think I think the politicians, and in the same way the media, reflect the public. They don't necessarily lead nor create public opinion. They reflect where it is, and I think we showed our hand at the last election. Well, you, we handed you, a man. Okay, I, I take your point on the. It's on not the a tone. question so of taking say, my point or the tone. Chair Starmer has done precisely what you seemed to want a political leader to do when you came on and called yeah, Boris Johnson a scurrilous liar know, with no integrity. I want, I want, I want a leader. I don't, I don't oh, actually personally think that's that important. I want him to be a CEO that runs, runs the and, operation. And, 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 and you think, think people, you think people have arrived at the conclusion that Keir Starmer is a woke thunderbird without the ministrations of ludicrously sycophantic, cap doffing client journalists, Alex, including you, mate. So don't patronise everybody else for being led by the nose by the media when you just give... Of course we, you we are. Give calling him a woke thunderbird. Absolutely pathetic. The man has done what Boris Johnson could never do in a million years. He stood up and said, all right, if I'm guilty, I will go. And Boris Johnson can't do that because he can never take responsibility for anything he's ever done in his life. So, listen, you probably feel a little bit brutalised. Um, good. Because you have proved yourself to be precisely in the constituency that you were criticising other people for being in all along. As if, somehow, it is merely a reflection of public feeling. Public feeling is created and manipulated by client journalists who are responsible for people describing the man who said he's going to do the right thing, and we probably agree about his success in engaging the, poli uh, the, the country on policy platforms and uh, charisma or whatever you want to call it, but he has done the right thing on this. He's done the right thing. And to think that somehow makes him the wrongin or, or, or the, what was it, the woke thunderbird? Come on, man, you're better than that. Seamus is in Wallington. Seamus, what would you like to say? Um, good morning. Hello, Simon. Uh, I, I feel like I've crossed the ultimate line, to be perfectly honest, in, in, in phoning your show this morning because um, my politics don't align with it itself, James. Uh, okay. I feel physically sick. Um, I, I feel really, really hurt by, by what this, 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 is man, this man is doing. I, I've voted Conservative all my life. I'm 59. Mm. Um, I believe... Everything for me is about how you manage finances and the economy. Right. I've never trusted Labour. But I think the office of Prime Minister is, is a privilege. It's the ultimate privilege. Um, and I think it, it requires it requires morals. It requires integrity. I'm pleased what she's done. I don't know the true reason why she's done it, and that's your question. I hope it's because... A line has been crossed out and everything it, it is unacceptable. I, I don't have any love for Keir Starmer at mm. all, but I want to criticise the man and his policies and his political behaviours and, and to tell lies, scurrilous lies in, in this way. 
you cannot have, you can't have it. Uh, and I feel really hurt. Um, I can't believe that we've got to this point in, in, in the Conservative body. But I voted for him. Um, I wanted to get Brexit done. Um, I thought it, he was the man to do it. Um, I'll hold my hand up and say that I've turned my eye away from a lot. Mm. Um, but uh, I don't want to anymore. I uh, I, I want... Uh, I think a good man it, it has to be, a, a, or a good woman, yes. uh, or integrity and moral and, and truth has to lead our country. We are a fantastic country. I agree We're a fair you. country. Yeah. We're a proud country. Um, we're decent. We always have been decent. Uh, we stand up to to lots of things that are wrong. Um, but it, this guy has taken us far and up. I hear we're you. really upset. I know you are. I know you are. And that's why I'm going to be very respectful, even though I think a couple of the things you've said, people will be expecting me to to, to pounce on like a, like, a, like, a, like a cat, like the Downing Street cat. But you're, you're, you're struggling here. You're suffering. And I understand why. You've been profoundly let down by somebody in whom you'd placed a lot of trust and a lot of faith. And, 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 and you're taking it very personally, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, I love our country. Yeah. Um, I think what was what was it? The, the Queen and and uh, and her on her own. That image of her on her own at her husband's yeah. funeral. Well, these guys were. I don't even want to talk about it. To no, be fair it, enough. It, Can I ask you one question then? I think if because you, you, you clearly listen to the show a bit. So how, how, can I can I ask how, how can you possibly be surprised? Would you let me ask you that? No. I think I, think I heard a click. I'm just being stupid, no, James. No, you're there. I lost that, mate. I don't know what happened to the phone line. Sorry. I don't, what did you just say? Just feel stupid. Well, don't feel stupid. Look, I mean, you, you know what I say at this point. Contempt for the con men, compassion for the con. But I am surprised at the scale of your surprise. Because, you know, he told you who he was a long time ago. It's not... James... Yeah. I don't expect our politicians to be squeaky clean. Of course. Uh, I think uh, I think there is the British public will put up with a lot if we get the job done. Yeah. Um but but there are some things that we we, we just won't accept. But you, what happened to the Queen is not is not acceptable. That's the thing that got you more than this, more than the lies about Keir Starmer, but it just speaks to a similar mindset perhaps, or just an absence of what you and I would call values, and we might disagree about everything political in the traditional sense, but we probably gr agree on what we might call values or, or decency. And that's why I'm so surprised that you're surprised at the fact that Boris Johnson's never had any. That's all. Uh, you know, I'm, I've heard what you do to people on the show, James. And I'm, I'm not sure doing, that it, you can I'm not doing it to you, am I? I'm sure you can, you, I'm sure you can take me apart, but... But I'm not going to, because uh, uh, it's content for the con men and com compassion for the con, Seamus. Compassion for the con. Values and, and, and principles and, and, and decency. I, I am prepared to turn okay. a, a, a blind eye in some respects to, okay. to, to, to get the job done. I thought that we were in a terrible state with regards to Brexit. I thought that we were on the brink of ending as a party if if Brexit was not done. I literally thought we were disintegrating. Yeah. I thought he was the man to get us over the line. Um... But uh, I can't, I can't, are. there are some things, I don't like, what, what, we've lost a lot of people in this pandemic and, and, and I feel a lot of what's been done is, flies in the face of decency. Um, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but one of the things that I do is I, I'll put my hands up and, and I'll look people in the eye and I'll tell the truth. I, 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 I think it's really important to be a decent person. Um, no one gets it right all the time, James, with the greatest respect, even your good self. You're damn right. You're damn right. And I don't know that I'm quite the man that you are, actually, in, 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 in the, the, the moments of realisation. I don't know that I would ring uh, a, a radio host who I disagree with in the way that you've done. I think it's really brave, actually, what you've just done. Really, imp well, I don't want to patronise you, but I'm quite, I'm quite impressed, Seamus. Quite, no, actually, I'll tell you what I am. I'm quite moved, mate, by your honesty. And your decency. Well, I've, I've, I, I just want 
uh, our MPs, um, I wrote to my MP and I asked him, um, I, I wrote to him about values and about honesty and decency and mm -hmm. I've asked him to do the right thing, whatever the consequences are. Um, but uh, we, we need to bring this country together now. We've had five or six years of a horrible fraction, discord, hurt, division. Um, and I, I believe that the Conservatives can move beyond that. But not not with this guy. The, the, this guy is not... He's not right. Fair enough. We need someone who can... Who can, who can bring us together and, and and bring honesty and decency back into politics. Today's not I'm the day. Today, today's not the day, but I, I, I can't let you go without saying it doesn't have to be a Conservative to do that. Uh, you, you'll let me have that just as, as, as we part, won't you? Well, anyway. <laughs> Maybe not. Thank, thank you, James. Do you want to say for, who the MP... Do you want to say who the MP was, just to put a bit more pressure on them to do the right thing? It's up to you. Uh, he's a good man. Yeah. He's a decent man, um, Elliot Colburn, from, um, am I allowed to say his constituency? Yeah, you can say what you want. He's uh, from, from Carshilton and, and, and Wallington. He, he's a good man. Okay. And uh, I think well, I he he's listening. Uh, well, he will. He will hear this. I can absolutely guarantee it. So that, there it is, the call to him to do, what was his name again? I, you, just the phone went down. <laughs> Elliot Colburn. Elliot Colburn. Um, there you go. Look, look, look Seamus in the eye. And tell him what you're going to do. Thank you, mate. I know it wasn't easy for you, but I hope you... Do you feel better now than you did before you rang in? Um... <laughs> so get back to me on that one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, James. My, my, there you go, mate. Take it easy. Uh, Neve's in Streatham. Neve, what would you like to say? Um, I think that much of the discourse surrounding this whole situation, particularly on this show, has been missing a large point that's, like, very, very... That's why you're here, Neve. Yeah, so... So what I'll say is Chris Rock has been making commentary on the black community from the beginning of his career. Yes. If you see on Everybody Hates Chris, this this man, he's he's been making commentary for his entire career. Yes. And he should know better. He's an educated man. And he actually made an entire documentary about black women's hair. Black women's hair has been the butt of the joke for so long. From black men, from white, from white men, from white women, from everyone. And Jada has gone and openly said, I'm losing my hair. Yes. Like, there's so much importance in hair, and I'm losing my hair, and she's spoken about it, and she's got a condition. And then Chris Rock uses her, again, as the butt of the joke, in an extremely white space in front of the entire world. And it's humiliating a black woman, and I think that he did what he had to do to protect his family and his woman. So you're... You, I mean, I, forgive me for putting it into slightly tabloid terms, but you, you're, you're in favour of the violence, then? I'm not speaking about violence. You, I can't you, speak you on what, I can't speak no cuz I can't speak on what he did to protect his family. All I'm saying you is You can. That's what I the whole phone I, in is about. Sorry, no, but, because, but it just is. Because you're missing the point. You're well, missing the point. Okay. Pete, we're not actually speaking about the gravity of what he's actually done. Well, but we totally what are. I mean, it may well be done. that I'm missing a point, but the point of this phone in is should Will Smith have hit Chris Rock and you're saying yes. Yeah, I think that he did what he okay, had to do. there you go. So I'm not missing defense. any points at all. You're, I, I you're, you're, you're in favour of hitting I, people I if they offend you. I would go out and hit people for myself, but I can say, look, when, when you're looking after your family, especially in a very public way, I'm not going to speak on what he, how he wants to look after his family. You are, though. Bye. Sorry, you might not want to. You might not be comfortable with where it's led you, but you are saying it's okay to hit people if they offend you. And where does that end? Because okay. well, it's okay to hit you if you offend me, is it, or not? Look, you'd have to take. Did you have to take that up with me in the situation? But again, this is not what, this is not what I'm talking about. Well, I'm afraid I'm it's what about. everyone else is talking about. So possibly it's you that's missed the point. Because I think that you're coming at this from uh, an angle of violence when really we're the, talking the about an act of violence. That's the only thing on which look, everyone can look, agree. Look, look, look. I'm looking. This, this 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 whole conversation. You're not a black man, and a lot of the people calling in have not been. Black women, I'm assuming. I don't just know. Just from that. what I've been listening to you. I, don't, I disagree. I, don't, I think that there were actually, but I, I mean, I don't know that that is of, of enormous relevance in the context of whether or not it's okay to hit someone who's offended you. I, I'd like to think okay. that we could have that conversation in uh, a humanitarian way, in a, in, a, in a possibly even a colour blind way. In a colour blind way. If, if is it okay to hit someone who offends you with okay. a joke about hair loss? Yeah, yeah I think okay. we can do that. I, I think we can do that objectively. Yeah, okay. I suppose then, yeah, I agree. It's okay. 
it's okay for him to hit him in the situation. Yeah, oh, well then, I disagree with you. I don't think it ever is, because then you open the door to it being okay for someone to hit you if you cross certain conversational lines or, or comedy lines. It's a crass joke. It's a bad joke. It's a joke I would not have made. It's a joke I thought, watching it, that he would probably do... In private, and I don't know whether that is a mitigating factor. You know, you, you do that. You break the ice. You, you kind of uh, uh, diffuse the room, don't you? You, you? you make it more comfortable because everybody's thinking about it. And people like Chris Rock, I guess, are possessed often of the ability to get that right. And he got it horribly, horribly wrong. But you can't go around slapping people if they've offended you. Otherwise, you end up in Thomas in Liverpool's world where, uh, you know, th there's not enough slapping. Neil's in Southams. Neil, why is the Secretary of State for Transport not getting involved in the looming industrial action? OK, just, just to put this into context, I'm not supporting... Grant Shapps or any of his other monikers. Sure. But <laughs> the... <laughs> Monica might be one of them. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Um, but the, the, the point I was trying to make to your uh, producer slash researcher is yes. that these are privately run companies. I get the point, you know, it's a national, you know, rail service, but it's run by private companies. So yes. the only analogy I can possibly think of is... Would you like Nadine Doris to be involved in your pay review? Because I'm pretty certain I wouldn't. That, that's a, I mean, it's a powerful analogy, but I don't know how pertinent it is, because one would have to ask, if, if it's nothing to do with the Transport Department, why do we have a Secretary of State for Transport? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, but... Uh, there's no point. These are privately run companies. No, I, I know they are, but, but I mean, they're still privately run companies when people like Grant Shapps are trying to claim that Keir Starmer should get involved. Yeah, 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 yeah no, absolutely. But I'm, I'm not saying Grant Shapps is right. But that might, that but, might but, be but, their rationale. They won't come out and say yeah. so, though, will they? No, no, they won't. Um, but the, the other flip side of this is, is that I was listening to the chap from the RMT yes. on, I think it was on, on LBC over the weekend. Yeah. And he was talking about how you know, the working conditions is what they're trying to protect. But his members work 35 hours a week and they don't want to work 40 hours a week. Now, I'm pretty certain that you probably work more than 40 hours a week. I know you spend three hours on LBC, but I'm pretty certain you probably do more than 40 hours a week as I, do I, 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 other, other members of your team. I, yeah, well, Keith does. Um, I do. I yeah. work more than 40 hours a week, and my wife, who is a teacher, works nearly double that. Yes. So, So explain to me again... I will. Why 35 hours a week is, you know, acceptable in this day? Who are you talking? Who, who are you talking about here? Which which, which workers? That was, what the, that was that was the guy. Was the guy yes, but which which team. workers specifically was he describing? Uh, his members. Yes, and, and, I use and, the word and in inverted commas. do you want to work more than 35 hours a week? No, they don't want. No, to no. Work do you? As far as well, I do it because I'm self-employed. That's and not what I asked. I have did, to. I, I, yes, but do you want to? <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind. Well, there you go then. What are you complaining about? They don't. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. yeah. Be, What's the point you think you're making, Neil? They, they need to be more efficient. So it's either they do five hours a week more, so it's, you know, an hour a day more. But why? What do you mean, why? Well, why do because they need to? Why, why do they need to do? They'd have to get. They'd have to get paid for it. So you could. You could. They could just hire more yeah. people to do more hours. And and yet they're talking about sacking three thousand. Well, hang on. How can we hire more people when you've amply demonstrated that we have labour shortages? And why is it the job of someone who currently works for the railways to make up for the government's disastrous policies? Yeah. Well, but, um, but you, you've just said they could hire more people, but we haven't got the labour to fill those. And whose fault is that? But that, that, we're not, it's not a blame game. Oh, it is. Just, of course, it's a blame game. They're trying to blame it all on Keir Starmer, and you're sounding as if you may have swallowed some of the Kool Aid. So because no, you because you want really. to work, so because you want to work more than thirty five hours a week, you're cross hmm. with people who don't. I'm not cross with them. Well, no. what then? You think they, they should be forced to do they're something they're that they don't want to do because you do it despite home. wanting to do it? <clears throat> no, no. I'm, I'm well, yes, that's you. what you said. Your, mate, your, your, your argument was that grant shops should get involved. My point is that yes. they would use it's their private companies. I put it to you, would you like Nadine Norris to get involved with your pay review? Well, I mean, it's odd that you say that, because Nadine Norris has sought, thing. she she has sought to get involved in my employment status, and she's libelled me uh, 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 under with parliamentary privilege yeah, yeah. At, at select committee, so I, obviously I can say I'd rather she didn't, but I have no choice in the matter, mm. she did. 
well, getting involved in your pay review and in, in your employment status are two different things. Well, I don't know what the most important part of my pay review would be if I didn't have a job, Neil, but she's called publicly for me to be fired. So I don't think, I mean, look, that's unfair yeah. on you because you didn't probably know that when you rang in and it is a bit of a zinger, but in the very specific case of my career and that apology for a cabinet minister, it doesn't work very well. So I, I, I take your point. But to say that, how would you like it if a politician, because just to be fair and to be clear, that is ultimately what you're saying. Well, how would you like it if politicians got involved in any areas of government? Aren't you? No, well, well, I, yeah. well I wouldn't, well, please say, I, I wouldn't right. like Nadine Doris getting involved in my business. No, but I think if you because wanted... Come under if, her remit. But if you wanted to stop a strike happening tomorrow and she was in charge mm. of the sector in which the strike was happening, you'd struggle to make a case for suggesting that she shouldn't try to stop the strike for happening, Neil, which is what you're doing now. Struggling. No. no <laughs> well, I'm yes, not, come on, mate. Not, so like, so if there's a massive strike, if, the, if there's I'm a massive strike, mate, way. come on, if there's a massive strike happening tomorrow in a sector for which Nadine Dorries is the Secretary of State, she bears ultimate political responsibility for it, would you or would you not want her to try to stop the strike from happening? Yeah, yeah, of course you would. Well, then we're, yes. in, if we're in total agreement. Dave's in Lewisham. Dave, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Yeah, um, a retired police officer, so I just want to answer your question as to his... As uh, that you asked, and that's that it's a Section 5 public order offence. It's causing har harassment, alarm or distress. Nothing to do with annoyance. And that's, um, all, but, in uh, your, that's all in your gift, is it, as a, as a copper on duty that day? You, you make that you, call yourself? Well, do you well, not need someone is, to tell you that they're alarmed no, or distressed? You, no, you no, you make that call yourself. There's people there that are in mourning and, and that would feel distressed uh, of the... But don't they need also. to tell you that, though? Don't you need to have some proof that someone is distressed? Not necessarily, James. You have to take it in. Also, they're looking at his safety. I mean, you might find someone there that's, you know... Well, that's different. Right let's, focus, let's, fo let's focus Let's focus on the Section company. 5, the Section 5 bit first. So any police yeah. officer can cart away someone holding a sign they don't like and claim that they've done so because they believed it was causing distress despite having because, no evidence that it was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's not right, it is cause, it? Uh, if, they, if they believe it's going to cause a public order situation, James, then it is completely right. I mean, it's, it's also, for, as I said, for his safety. I mean, it could be that he got walloped because people didn't like his, his protest. Yes. So, um, yeah, so I, I do think it's right. I do think that, I mean, put it this way, James, if someone came up to your ass after your father died and held up a sign saying your dad was a useless plumber, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, take it... To, too much to heart. I'd be if surprised if they. I'd be surprised if they got arrested for. I know because he wasn't. He wasn't a plumber. But what I'm saying is, if they turned up at the funeral and held up the placard or shouted out your. Well, I mean, we're not talking story, about the funeral, honest. are we? Though, because it's it's not for a week. But it, it's it's mourning though, James. Yeah, but, but let's talk about the period of mourning. Let's not talk about the funeral because it isn't. Yeah. A okay. funeral. It's a period of mourning, or in fact, it wasn't. It was the announcement of the accession of the king, and your reading okay. of it is that a, a police officer there decided entirely off his own back that that placard could cause distress to some as yet unspecified person and therefore he's allowed to arrest them for possession Absolutely. of for it, possession it, of it, cardboard yeah it's not for possession of cardboard it's well called, it is uh, uh, so it's because unless you can show me the distressed it. person it's 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 he's been guilty of possessing cardboard so James, you want you want them to leave? Don't him give there me counterfactuals. Get... Just, 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 right. just. I okay. mean, we're agreeing with each other. You think it's yeah. it's fine that a copper, yeah. who I know nothing about, whose track record right. uh, uh, of um, being a bit, you know, quick off the mark, might might be yeah. well established. There's a piece of cardboard over there with some words on it. He decides that's potentially distressing, and then arrests the person in possession of the cardboard. Absolutely, we're, we're not arguing with each other. You no, just think that's fine. Not... I think that's profoundly frightening. Well, it, it's, it, you've got to take it in circumstance, James. What if it says it, down the with the government? Could you decide no, that was no, distressing? It, no, not if it was in the, not in the, the, the outside of Palace or, you know, if they, you were walking down the street and saying that with the government or you, you, you know. But he was that, in the street. They are in, these people are in the street. No, but they're at these public places of mourning, James, where there's thousands of people But they don't like, they, they, they disapprove of the monarchy in the same way that the fellow over there disapproves of the government. When better to uh, make your point? And that they have every right to disapprove of the monarchy, although I'm a monarchist. But it's, it's not the point, James. It's it is. the situation that he's in yeah. that could cause. Um, yeah, no, that, that, that's problems. a different argument. I think I think you would have won that argument if you'd phoned in to make it, but you didn't. You went down the distress and whatever well, it that's was. The, that's, it, that's the offence they would arrest him under. Right, that's that's, that's scary, isn't it? That's possession of cardboard. Uh, no, it's, it's you're, you're being semantics. 
is, is looking at semantics there, James. It's not political I, I, carbon. I am they're looking at semantics, yes. And the yeah, semantics they're, they're tell not... me that he's been arrested because he's in possession of com cardboard that no, had, some hurty wo had, had some hurty words on. No, he's been arrested for his own safety. And for, That's for not the point you made. That's that, that, order th no, that may well be a valid defence. Although, again, I'd ask you to prove to me that they were under threat, or they were... Because I'm remember, I'm one of the people disapproving, Dave. I think you've overlooked that. If you consulted your notes, you'd notice that I'm going, oh, shut up, mate, sit down, not now. Now's not the time. Show a bit of respect. But I still don't think they should be carted away for the crime of possessing cardboard. Uh, Spencer's in Croydon. Spencer, what do you reckon? Yeah, there's James, I'd like to say, like, first of all, she's a less than a 1% shareholder. It's 11 and a half um, million quid a year, mate. I, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's yeah, hands yeah, up for it's that. It's about the voting rights on there and how much voting in influence she has on that company. Yeah, she can vote and not to take one, her money. That's just a one vote, one woman, one vote but, but, but part of the business. Well, that's, well, how much, how much influence would that stop the company doing? Well, it would insulate her husband. Even... It would insulate her husband from the, from the very obvious accusation that you can't lay down the law to Russia while your wife is trousering money that's been made in a country that, that other businesses around the globe have been queuing up to stop doing business with. That's okay. Yeah, on that particular point as well, there's a lot of sanctions going around everywhere and most companies get around it by... Oh, uh, you're doing it again. Good... No, you can't do this. Just because there's a lot of bad stuff going on doesn't mean that you outlaw the good stuff, Spencer. No, you certainly not. But however, you, most companies outsource whatever they need to sell goods and services to a third no, party no, country. No, 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 and no, 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 no. Third party no. country, another oh, company. There's no picks point. It up, there's no point doing Russia the right or thing. Any other country that's the country no, that's this been, doesn't work, uh, been does sanctioned. It? There's no point doing the right thing. You're saying because so many people do the wrong thing. Oh, yes, there is that's a exactly what you're saying. There's, there's a point of doing a good thing, however... What would a good thing be in this context? Knows, everyone everyone knows that there's I'm a ask you again. country that's willing to trade I'm going with to ask Russia you again. or another if, if, However often you repeat yourself, I'm going to ask you, what would be the right thing to do then in this context? The right thing to do is probably show her, look, she's earning that particular money, and show the board that she's not happy with, with, with receiving so that why money. why hasn't she done that? that money on hold and put that money on hold. No, but then you're making it about her, you see, as opposed to about him. But it's about her. It's, in, it's not, because it's she's him. not sitting at the G20 telling everybody that Vladimir Putin is a wrong one who, who, who needs to be this, that and the other, while also not being able to impose sanctions on Vladimir Putin's Russia in his own house. But, but it's about her, then only it's about him. If it wasn't it's about, about her, both of them. About this is at the heart of my question this morning. Is 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 actually the notion of whether or not you can separate them from each other? And I don't think you can. Imagine if it was the other way around, just for a split second. Imagine if Jeremy Corbyn's wife was taking millions of quid out of a company doing business in Russia. What do you think the newspapers in this country would have done with him uh, and her over the course of the last nine months, Spencer? It's very difficult. Obviously, they're they're. Well, they're just have a little a guess. Couple. Have a little it's, guess. It's a, it's a married if couple. If Jeremy so Corbyn's wife was taking to, millions <laughs> of quid out of a business doing trade in sanctioned Russia after it invaded Ukraine, what what do you? How much do you think we'd have heard about that? Quite a lot. Quite, quite a lot. A lot. Uh, yeah. Really all right. Let's lot. part. Let's part on that note then. Or Ed Miliband's wife, or Keir Starmer's wife, but particularly Jeremy Corbyn, of course, on this occasion, because um, much of his team seemed rather less disgusted by some Russian antics than the rest of the country. Mark's in Cheltenham. Mark, what's going on? Well, I remember when Liam Byrne in two thousand and seven under Tony Blair announced the hostile environment policy. It wasn't a policy, it was a consultation document. And well, he, and, and he, let me tell you what the, and he wasn't, what the And he wasn't was. Home Secretary. Well, well, let me tell you what the policy was, right? Because I'm an employer, and they announced that at the same time as they announced, as an employer, you had to check the British passport of everybody who was applying for, who was who you were going to give a job to. And did that come in? And the hostile environment. Yeah, they absolutely brought it in. So, Every time but he wasn't Home Secretary. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter how quickly you talk, you're never going to make Liam Byrne an ex-Home Secretary, are you? Liam Byrne announced that policy. Yeah, but well, listen, 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 listen to what Michael Gove, listen to what Michael Gove said, Mark. Listen to what Michael Gove said. Um, you know, we're, we're going to disagree politically and all the rest of it, but I'm just had it up to here with people trying to suggest that this country is not generous. Yeah. Yeah. And all this.
this stuff about hostile environment. The hostile environment was invented under a Labour Home Secretary. So can we just chuck it when it comes to the partisan nonsense and get on with delivery? So Liam Byrne was never Home Secretary, was he? Uh, Liam Byrne was the Immigration Minister working in the Home Office under a Labour Home Secretary. He gave a speech that had been signed off clearly by the Labour Home Secretary while he was Immigration Minister. I think it's sophistry to claim anything else. No, I think you're probably right. The problem is, though, it was a consultation document rather than a a policy. But you think that's what Gove was referring to? I absolutely think that's what he was referring to. And it was accompanied by, by by policy choices as well. Yeah, fair enough. So the partisan nonsense, what was that bit about? Well, I mean, look, uh, it's pretty clear that, you know, La- Labour decided they were going to have a go um, and uh, and throw and throw some eggs. I think mo- what most people want is a simple, straightforward policy of allowing people to come in, but in a controlled manner. It strikes me that's what the government are doing. It's quite sensible. Well, it's not controlled at all, though. Well, I think it is quite controlled. Is, you're, you're, jumping you're, jumping ahead, sure. you're jumping ahead to the next hour. It's not, I mean, it, it's, it's by far the weakest proposal in Europe. Well... well I don't think it is quite a weak proposal in Europe. Well, right? it's the, it we're the only country that hasn't waived visas, aren't we? Well, it, it, but you just made my point for me, which is that people are allowed to come in in a controlled manner. 90,000 people, I understand, have signed up in order to have people in their home. But you have to, you have to have themselves. made contact with a Ukrainian family over social media. You don't... And, and I, I, I mean, this is the conversation I'm planning on having in the next hour. I don't want to preempt too much of it. And I'm just checking on whether or not this consultation document ever became policy, and I, I think your confidence might be slightly misplaced on that. But the point about the immigration, the refugee proposals that have been put forward is that there's no proper oversight or, or care for the people that can offer to put up a refugee. That's what worries me. What checks are going to be done on you? Well, I, I think that's an unreasonable point, but I think what is clear is that what we're not seeing well, here let's is talk a about what environment we... being creative for Ukrainians, right? And that's how, that's how this conversation started, right? But it was. So you just Well, let's listen, is... listen again to Priti Patel from last week, Mark. Visa applications do um, are important in terms of this process and what we are seeing and it is important that we're flexible in our response and we have been is that there are many Ukrainians that do not have documentation and if I may Mr Speaker I think this country and all governments including uh, probably a government that she once served in will recognise that there was something known as the Windrush scandal um, and it's important that everyone arrives in the UK has physical and digital records of their status here in the UK to ensure that they're accessible to schemes. So there's been a three-stage climb down from where they were a week ago, and Gove is complaining that people complained about where they were a week ago. Do you see that? Well, how how dare you talk government... about, how dare you criticise us and say that the country isn't generous when they've had to U-turn on the policy that everyone was criticising and saying wasn't generous, Mark? So what, what I see is a country and a government who are trying to give not a hostile... Now, let's, just, let's focus on the detail of what country. I just said, because what Gove is complaining about is people criticising... He's pretending that it's the, the, the country that's being typified as ungenerous. It's actually his government's policy. How can he complain about people criticising his government's policies when they have abandoned those policies themselves? Well, I, I don't think it's wholly unreasonable for people to... To, to, if we want to bring Ukrainians in, we should at least know no, that they are Ukrainians. Again, right? again mate, again, I'm asking you how someone can complain about a policy being criticised if the people that introduced the policy have abandoned it themselves. It's a really simple question. You, 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 you have to address it. Well, uh, but it strikes me that the, the complexity here... No, but you're, you're doing it again. You're, you're pretending you're a politician and you're just saying lots of words in response to a... It's a really simple question. Here's a really simple question. Here's a policy... No, no, I know, we've established that. It was Liam Byrne. OK, that, that's fine. And, and it was a, a consultation document, not, not an actual policy. But let's focus on what Michael Gove did in the House of Commons yesterday. He complained about the country for which we read Conservative government being typified as ungenerous, claiming that it was actually generous because of what he'd just announced. But all of the complaints were directed at the policies that the government itself has abandoned. So I, I'll ask you again, what's going on? Well, I think the government are doing quite sensible policies. They're allowing okay, people to come so you're not going to you're not going to address the fact that they've abandoned the policies that were being criticised. Well, they're not abandoned them. The fact okay, Mark. Well, policy- then, then, then we're inhabiting conflicting realities, which is fine. So, just to be clear, you think the policy that Michael Gove announced yesterday was the same as the one that Priti Patel was defending a week ago? 
well, I think the policy of the United States is very sensible, which is let's allow. Yes, so again, before we go to the news, do you think course, the policy that Michael, the, the policy that Michael Gove announced yesterday, is it or is it not the same as the one that Priti Patel defended last well, week? Well, and Sir Edward well, Lee, well, and Sir Edward Lee Chapel. I'm really sorry, mate. It's a yes or no question. Well, I've no, I've no doubt that the policy has changed. What with there having been a war in the last two weeks, right? There, 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 there was a war when Priti Patel was defending it. There was a war when Sir Edward Lee endorsed it and claimed that Lincolnshire had done enough. They've abandoned the policy that was being complained about, and it doesn't really... Oh, mate. Sarah is in Portsmouth. Sarah, what would you like to say? Hi, thank you for having me on your show. Oh, I actually welcome. spoke to you when I um, returned from Iraq oh, uh, yes. talking about vaccination, so it's nice oh. to speak to you again. And um, I, I think the thing I want to start off with really is disappointment. You know, mm. um, I myself looked at the dates of when all of these alleged parties had happened on both sides, whether that be from Keir Starmer or from Boris Johnson himself. Well, no, I don't um, think anyone's all... alleging that Keir Starmer had a party. Well, no, quite, but no. It, it's still in, in breach of perhaps mm. COVID regulations. Well, no, it categorically, but, you know, it categorically isn't. isn't. No, no one's claiming it's in breach of COVID yeah. regulations. Well, if they well, are, they're wrong. Well, nevertheless... The, yes, but the it's, no, it's important to be it clear happens. on this because we don't want to do no, any quite. sparpling. No, quite, but you know, even still, you know, these dates happened around the time that I was supposed to be returning home. Mm. Um, you know, ordinarily we get something called R&R &R, so we can come back home. There I am, you know, out there for nine straight months yes. because I'm not allowed to re return home whilst he's having a party. Yes. Now, I spoke Jeez. to your research, you know, I've been a lifelong, you know, conservative uh, voter. Um, I don't foresee myself, you know, switching sides. I don't think anything drastic like that would, would be beneficial to me, but mm. I don't think I could ever vote for him. Right. Um, bearing in mind that I've lived in London for most of my life and I saw how amazing he was as a mayor. Um, and actually that's the, one of the most uh, foremost reasons why I actually voted for him. What was uh, your, your favourite bit of his mayoralty? Um, I think it was just the, the policies around the transport. I mean, I think that Sadiq Khan has done an awful job with which, transport Which policies London. around the transport? Sorry, to, I just, I'm just uh, intrigued because I, mean, I was covering it at the time and I, I've never heard anyone use the word amazing before. What, what, what was your favourite policy? Oh, well, not allowing, you know, the ultra-low emission zones and at the time the LEZs to come into foremost. I mean, but that wasn't the, the a policy. That was that was just a, an absence. So you can't say I, what I really liked about him was, was the fact that well, he, no, he didn't... Rejected it. He, well, no, he rejected it. He rejected okay. the, the low emission zones. Well, I, I, so that's actually, fine. I, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, we, we know that the coroner has found at least one child has died as a result of the pollution on yeah. the roads in London, but I guess we all take our amazement where we find it, Sarah. Yeah, but you know, I don't disappointed and uh, for me you know it's not just the fact that we feel cheated mm. um, as a society I think it is just the lack of reality you know it's almost like he's living in a complete bubble where he thinks that no one sees what he's doing but remember uh, that, that when, when he was having that affair with Jennifer Arcuri he told you he was having <laughs> technology lessons and presumably you believed him <laughs> well no quite um, but it that was amazing. It, it, for me, it, 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 he comes across like he's a narcissist. And, you know, it's something that I hadn't really seen when he no, was there. Enough. You know, fair he's enough. so flamboyant. Yeah, but, sure. You know, um, I think it's probably transversed into pure narcissism now that he's turned into a prime minister. And it's just not healthy for us. You know, there's plenty of candidates that could replace him that I think uh, would who be do you, Just out of interest, who do you fancy? Who do you like for it? Who could the you Chancellor. Mm, the you Chancellor. like Rishi I mean, Sunak still? Yeah, I do. I, he's kept himself to himself. You know, I think Priti Patel is too authoritarian for Labour to, or any kind of, you know, yeah. um, people that wanted to vote Conservative but they weren't sure. I think that would be too much of a I think rush. she's a, also um, a bit crackers as well. That probably doesn't help. You know, <laughs> whereas Rishi so Sunak... Johnson, can, well, yeah. yeah, but in a different kind of way. So you don't feel... Because I, I thought there'd be more callers like you today, Sarah. I, I mean, it shows what I know. But, but I thought there'd be more... But I'm surprised by how many people have said they want to see a complete clear-out rather than just a... I don't see the point. You know, no, Richard nor do Sunak I, actually. has done so well. And, you know, judge Conservatives as you like. But, you know, the furlough... You've seen the story today about £4.3 billion pounds worth of fraud during furlough that's just going to be written off. Have you seen that story? Well, yeah, I have. And okay. you know what? It, it, I must it, say, it you're, 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 you're very... Um, if I had a bridge to sell, I'd be quite tempted to send you the prospectus. I have to say, Boris Johnson was an amazing mayor and, and Rishi, £4.3 billion pound down the Swanee... Sunak has been fantastic. 
Well, because you know what, he supported the people, and yeah. you know there are but always with the going people's to be people money. that are fraudulent. There are always people that are going to play the system. There are always going to yeah. be people that take advantage. Well, we should try and catch the them, shouldn't we? Need... We should try and well, catch them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, you know, the people that needed it, the people that really needed it, got it, and I think yeah. that that is you it know it was their money in the first place. The I mean, it's only taxpayers' money that he can give back to taxpayers. I know you know, he, but, I, but I think it was it was a very good scheme, and yeah. you know we are down the pan with with, with the money. But four point three billion, always, it, billion. It highlights billion. that people take advantage of. The I think. Listen, I'm teasing you a bit, Sarah. I, yeah. Thank you for taking it in good spirit. Thank you. Um, I, that's absolutely fi- fine. Um, my pleasure. But the, I do I do think you're probably right. Sunak does still have a um, veneer of credibility. Oh, whether it runs deep, I don't know. I don't know enough about him, and I do know that he's the only one really to. Get a little bit of clear blue water between him and Johnson. The rest of them were queuing up to essentially sort of debase themselves. It reminded me of Dobby the house elf, actually, at times, before uh, Harry Potter gave him the sock hidden in the book. Carly's in Ascot. Carly, what made you pick up the phone? Hi, uh, I've never called you before, so I'm a little bit nervous. It's only me. <laughs> um, and I don't, mean to, I don't want to argue with you at all, I really don't. Well, um, I, we'll, I we'll have to find... see about that, Carly. <laughs> Um, I just find you today, I'm yes. not going to be rude, a little bit patronising. No, assuming fine. that all we're doing is reading the papers and forming a view in that way. I mean... So how do you I know them? I really read the papers. How I, do you I know really them? I really don't. Pardon? How do you know them? I don't know them at all. All I know is... is well, let me just give you a bit of background. No, finish the sentence. I all, I know is, know, all I know is what I've seen in the media. No, 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 no. Oh, all, okay. I see, all I know is the interviews of the interview and the documentary. So if we just go basically just to that, yes. and I started reading the book about them, so and I couldn't, I couldn't bear it any longer. So they're the, which based book? on which book? Which things. book? I don't the know. The ones which... that Omid Scobie wrote. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, let's just go. Let's just look at those two things. I just, I mean, I don't care about the curtsy thing. That's not, you know, whatever. She, that's fine. But what I don't understand is what the ultimate goal of all this is. But we explained that last night. No. I mean, imagine somebody that you've never met is writing pages and pages and pages about you and your loved ones, and the record contains their lies, their bile, their embellishments, their exaggerations. Imagine it was you. Yeah, but what would you do? Going on to a, a, a document, just as a bit of background, my 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 mum died the same time as Princess Diana, like one week after, and I have two brothers the same age as, as Harry and, and and William, and I just don't understand anything that important to 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 to, to, slay, to, to break that bond. And, and to go on national television, but, world television. But who do you think broke the bond? I mean, things. again, I. I, I I mean, I believe you that you've tried to watch the programmes and read the book and that none of this is based upon British media handling of it, but wh- where do you get the idea that Harry broke a bond with his brother? Just, did you see the documentary? Of yeah, that no, of course that? I did. He, he described yeah. how when he begged for help in getting the largely racist abuse of his wife off the front pages of the newspapers, he was told to suck it up because everyone else had gone through it with their white partners as well. No, I think, I think what he, she, she asked to go in, she asked for help... And uh, see, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I don't know, but I wasn't there. But are you no, but I, I'm me, interested in the whole to know. Of the UK, there's no, there's no, there's no access to any mental health help. Well, you've you've jumped around quite a lot now. I don't think Meghan Markle can turn up at the local NHS drop-in clinic, can she? Ask for precisely the reason that explains to you, if you're genuinely confused, explains to you why they need to tell their own side of the story. If she turned up at a mental health clinic, randomly, as a member of the public, it would be on the front page of every newspaper in the country, but by tea time... Understood, but do you not think that so she can't do that. inside, you know, around? So, I mean, we weren't there. We don't know. All well, I you know seem to be I fairly confident again, Carly. You, you're, you're, you're following the line that is being put out precisely in opposition to them. Everything you're saying, I I appreciate you never read the Daily Mail and all of your information has been arrived at by starting to read Omid Scobie's book and watching the three documentaries last night. But all of... So let's assume... I don't want to patronise you, but all all of your talking points are straight out of the the anti-Meghan Markle playbook. But all... No, 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 but all we've heard is... is all we've heard is their story, haven't we? No, they, God, no. There's 22 health. pages in the Daily Mail today, which is the polar I, I, opposite of their story. But, but all their, that, that's their version that they've told the world. Sorry, what is? Now, the, 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 the version in the, in the documentaries last night. But I, I wanted some help mentally, and it was not forthcoming. 
Yeah. Right. And wh why are you cross about this? I'm not cross about that. But, why are you but, talking but about it on national radio? They have, I'm, I'm cross with the fact that the, 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 the constant... I don't understand the point of the documentary. I've just told you I the point of the documentary. Made people there are, feel there are really, millions really and millions of words written about them which they don't believe bears the vaguest resemblance to the reality of their lives. So they've told their own story themselves. I, I can't, I, again, I don't want to patronise you, but I can't make it any clearer. If it was you, and if you were opening up newspapers, turning on your television, switching on your radio every single day, and we were all talking about you and writing about you and talking about your children and talking about your husband and talking about your family and get, getting your estranged family members to turn up on television and put the boot into you, you'd stay silent, would you? No, 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 but we all know... Well, then now you know why they made the documentary. A documentary is not going to make that go away. All that's doing is fueling it. But again, they explained that. this, didn't they? They said they have, to, they have to have their side of the story out there. OK, they've got their side of the story out there. The, the, their side of the story is out there. But now what? what, uh, what my, my let's let's is, wait and what see. What is the ultimate goal of this? This is just going to make things well, worse. Again, I can only tell you what you already know. The ultimate goal is to refuse to let vicious, often racist commentators and journalists define their story. But do you think that doing this will, will stop that? I don't know whether it will stop it or not, but my God, if it was we me, I'd have, it to tr I'd have to try. So when, when you're, works. so you think you should never stand up to bullies because the bullies will always win? I don't think, I don't, I, I just think that they were, they were in a fantastic position to oh. really stand up to bullies. Right. And I think that there's people well, that's that just are silly. there that are in a terrible, terrible situation at the moment. Right. With children that are ill, and I think that constantly going on and on and on and on. Yeah, but they're doing loads they're and loads going. of other things as well that you presumably don't know anything about because you but don't I'm read sure any of are. you don't read I'm any sure of the media. But, but the problem is all this Can is I ask you another about. final it's no, I, I, all this. Okay. Is, nobody nobody's focusing on the good stuff. Okay. They're focusing well, you're on you're free to do so. You could have you know you could have rung me today to talk about all the charity work that they do and all the important work but what and, about and the charity work that thousands of other people are doing. Well, you could have phoned me to talk about that. It would have been a bit weird, but you were free to do so. Oh, exactly. Why I mean, didn't you talk about the the anti-racism award? I'm going to ask you a question and i know what your answer will be but i'm going to ask it anyway i'm going to ask it respectfully mm. why do you think you're so angry with them because i'm just sick of hearing about it okay and why did you tell me five and minutes I... ago you weren't angry well because i am now angry i just I, i'm sick of hearing about it and well I then turn it off you, country, you sat down I'm yesterday just... to watch three hours of a program featuring people that you're sick of hearing about because I was hoping that eventually it would finally go away. But you're I sick of hearing about it. There. There's people out there. But, country, you know I have to labour this point. Children. Carly, I have, to, la I have to labour this point. point. You're sick of hearing about it. Thing. You're sick of hearing about it. But you bought Thanks. Omid Scobie's book, you watched three hours of Netflix yesterday, and you've rung National Radio to talk about it. Do you see, the, do you see the problem? I appreciate I'm probably patronising you, but that's I'm just not, ridiculous. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a bad person. I'm, no I'm one's not, saying I'm, you're I'm a bad person, Carly. All I'm trying to do... It's just the I'm mirror that you saw when I started talking. Yeah, no, but you're sick no. of hearing about it. But I'm sick of hearing... But, but here you are. I'm trying on the radio today. I'm yeah. trying to do and my you work. Watched, and you watched and the programmes yesterday. And you watched the programmes yesterday. try and understand what the And you bought Omid Scobie's book. To try and understand what the fuss is all about. Which and you're sick of hearing about. Doing, no, but listen. I am listening, After Carmen. doing those things, after doing those things, yes. I don't understand what the fuss is about. Okay. I think there's people in this country but that you're are in the fuss. much worse situations. You're the, you are the I fuss. Think it's making them feel bad. You, because they're thinking, yeah. if, you, if, 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 if it's so bad for you, what about me? How, do, how does that make me feel? Right. I feel even worse now, because if it's this bad for you, how do I feel? Living in a council flat, I, I don't, but living in a council <coughs> flat with a disabled child that's, you know, going working all through the Just to be night, clear, you don't do it. None, none of this is relevant to you, just to be clear. You're not talking about yourself now. Well, I might be talking about but myself. But you're not. You just said you weren't. 
Okay, well, if I am or I'm not, that's not the point. Right. The, point the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of people in this country that are really in trouble yes. and are really struggling. And, and all they're hearing is hearing about this terrible life. A yeah. lot of people have got terrible lives and a lot of things going on. And I think that they should be brought to the forefront as well. Why do and you I think the more that this is going on and on and on and on and on, the longer it drags it out. Yes. And it's not helping anybody. Okay. Nobody you know, is getting benefit wh- from this. Why didn't, Nobody. You, why didn't you phone me yesterday when we were talking about food banks? Because I was in London yesterday. I didn't, I didn't hear it yesterday. Okay, I well, we've, we've talk, yesterday talked about it a hell of a lot that. more than we've talked about Harry and no. Meghan over the years, and you've never phoned me on any of the issues that. about poverty, about that. about children's just, mental health to problems. Be fair, I have tried calling you a couple of times. Well, you've, nev- you've never phoned me about any of the stuff that you're claiming is more important. But today, I, I do think it's more important. Okay, well, I, I look forward to, to those calls, now, and I'll leave you with one thought. I'll leave you with one thought, Carly. You are the fuss. I, I, but, but why? Why am I the same? That's what I was hoping to find out.